CBC Television, Windsor 9, serving Essex, Kent, and Lambton counties. A symbol of supremacy and a commitment to its story tonight. Game five of the Prince of Wales Championship on Hockey Night in Canada, a Canadian tradition. May 1986, the Montreal Canadiens edged the Calgary Flames 4-3 to bring home the Stanley Cup for a record 23rd time. A year later, the Canadiens falter at the Forum and that title is threatened. Game four, Sunday night. The Flyers' Pelly Eklund scores his third goal of the game and his fifth in two games as Philadelphia sweeps in Montreal. Eklund leads all Philly point-getters with six goals and 13 assists. The Canadians leave their own building on the brink of elimination, trailing the Wales final three games to one. For Philly netfinder Ron Hextall, who has played in all 17 Flyer games, another great performance and the link with goaltending's past is firmly in place. In the early years, Bernie Perrant was an anchor for the Flyers. He had 50 shutouts, appeared in five All-Star games, and on two Stanley Cup champions. Pete Peters followed, leading the Flyers to a pair of Campbell Conference championships, and he was part of a 35-game unbeaten streak in the 1979-80 season. Next would come the late Pelly Lindbergh. Lindbergh won the 1985 Vesna Trophy, helped to hang a Wales banner that same year, and was an NHL first-team All-Star. The Philadelphia Flyers are five-time conference champions. They will try to add to that tonight against the defending Stanley Cup champions. It's Game 5 of the Prince of Wales Final, Montreal at Philadelphia, live on Hockey Night in Canada. Live on CBC, Hockey Night in Canada. Brought to you by... Coors and Coors Light, a great call every time. Esso, stop in and fill up with the no-trouble gasoline. And by Ford of Canada, where quality is more than a commitment, quality is job one. John Perron and Mike Keenan made it to the Stanley Cup final in their first year behind the bench. If Perron is to avoid Keenan's sophomore jinx, the Montreal Canadiens will have to win tonight. And this trophy is what it's all about, a ticket to the Stanley Cup final. It's the Prince of Wales Championship trophy. With the Flyers leading the series three games to one, they can wrap this evening. It's game five from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Good evening, I'm Ron McLean. I suppose it should come as no surprise that Philadelphia would win two in Montreal. After all, the Flyers and the Canadians have been most effective on the road in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The big decision this evening comes in goal. The Montreal Canadiens have elected to go with Brian Hayward in the net, while the Philadelphia Flyers will counter with Ron Hextall, who tonight makes his 88th appearance. Thoughts on this game come compliments of Harry Neal and Dick Irvin. All right, Cup Philadelphia coach Mike Keenan in a pensive mood after the game two nights ago. He was sitting in the floor and the game was over, the rink was empty, and he told me that he was looking ahead a little bit, but also looking back, remembering how his team had a 3-1 to lead in games on the New York Islanders and had to go to seven. Keenan said, I hope the boys learned a lesson from that. We'll find out in the next two and a half hours. For Montreal to win tonight, they have to get better than average goaltending, something they didn't get in games three and four. The veterans on the Montreal team, Robinson, Ganey, Smith, Nyland, Green, have to play better than they did in game four and they have to get back to that tough, aggressive, abrasive, defensive hockey that was so good to them all season. Also joining us on the telecast this evening, Bob Cole provides the play-by-play, -play, and Don Cherry is along in the coach's corner. Coming up next, it's Game 5 of the Prince of Wales Championship Series, the Montreal Canadiens and the Philadelphia Flyers, as the tradition continues on Hockey Night in Canada and the Stanley Cup playoffs. Want to get a Pepsi? Sounds good. Everybody, the new computers are here. New computers? 
Who, may I ask, authorized new computers? Yeah, who? You did. Who did? I did? IBM. Of course I did. The new IBM personal system, too. The next generation in personal computing. New computers, new printers, and software. And IBM's new graphics put 256 colors on a screen at once. So our work will be bolder and brighter. If it'll make him brighter, count me in. Personal System 2 is faster. Oh, and it has incredible power. Someone say, power? It's a miracle. He's following instructions. Hey, we were made for each other. Is it easy to use? Even you could use it. Can we tie it all together? Ooh, Personal System 2 has excellent connectivity. So we can talk to each other? Only, Only if, if we, we have, have to. to. It's just what we need. Who's responsible for this? Well, I, of course, I, 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 IBM. IBM. <laughs> Introducing the new Personal System 2 family from IBM. It was a hot and humid day in Philadelphia. The skies opened up about 3 o'clock this afternoon. The rains came, and later the fans came to the Spectrum, 17,222 strong. And they are here to bear witness to Game 5 of the Prince of Wales Championship Philadelphia at home to Montreal. But there was almost as much attention for the pregame warm-up as there was for this game. Well, I went down. Everybody was down there at the end watching. Now, what happens is Claude Lemieux likes that uh, end of the warm-up, take the puck, shoot it in the empty net. Well, Chico uh, saw this. Chico Rest saw that. And he stopped at the one game, and the next game he took around and took the net, put it right up against the board so he couldn't. So tonight, now everybody's watching what's going on down there. Uh, Claude Lemieux waited around, waited around. He took the net. Chico put it up against the thing. Chelios went down, pulled it out, and Claude put it in. Now, that, do you think these guys still aren't kids? There are a lot of superstitions, and I think we'll show you some of those. Our tape machines were rolling, and a little later on in the telecast, you'll get a chance to see some of the other idiosyncrasies. How about the Montreal Canadiens? Their backs against the wall. Well, you know, uh, uh, I just go back to Toronto was up 3-1. Washington was up 3-1, and uh, they win this game tonight. And I would rather play it tonight on the road right here down 3-1. The pressure is on Philadelphia. Montreal seemed very tight in their own building. Uh, conversely, do you think that the fact that it's 3-1 and they have to when this game removes and puts all caution to the wind? Right. Well, I, I went down and watched the warm-up. They looked ready. They, they, they were jumping around, and they were ready to go. Of course, I said that the last game. I don't know, but they will win this game tonight. If they get to Hextall, they have to get to Hextall. If they don't win this game, the Philadelphia Flyers are on to the cup final. Now, let's go ringside. Good evening, everybody, from coast to coast, and welcome to Game 5 here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. The Flyers can win it tonight. If they don't, the feeling is it'll go 7. They're the referee for tonight, Dave Newell, Ron Finn, and Sweet Knox are on the lines. Jean Perron was faced with a difficult decision. Patrick Wall or Brian Hayward? Canadians were down 3-1 to one to Quebec, and Hayward got the job done. Perron is hoping... He can repeat. 
Well, he handles the puck better than any goaltender in the league. He can make passes as well as Mark Howe. And how he can stop pucks. If Montreal is to win, they have to solve Ron Hextall. And here we go at center ice. Sutter for Philadelphia. And Shane Corson starting at center for the Canadians. Momesso gets it back. Chalios on the defense with Rick Green. The Canadians get it into the center ice area and they shoot it in. It'll be Corson going in after it. McCrimmon cleared it on the boards. It might go right to Hayward. Yes, it does. And the goaltender just watches as the Flyers talk. It comes in for checking. Mark Howe stopped it near center. Here's Ganey for Montreal. Ganey flipped it into the Philadelphia zone. Next all out of the net. Backhands to pass for Tockett in the corner. He's out. Got by McPhee as he bounces one to center right. Indians slap it back to Mark Howe. Howe waits. Rink wide pass that goes down the ice. No icing goal. Chelios in first. McPhee takes it off the boards. Out to Naslin. Naslin for Canadians coming in there. Naslin fake a shot. And the Flyers, three of them get out. Zezel, a pass to the right side. Zezel gets in front. And it's broken up in front of the net. The Canadians whip it the other way. Naslund is coming in again on that right side. Drop back to Robinson. And the shot deflected by Hextall. Naslund again. Strudlin got in front of the net. But Crossman was there for the Flyers. And he clears it out. There goes Marsh. He's bumped on the boards. Hayward out of the net. He was slow in moving it. Flyers in for checking. Prop was upended. The play continues. And it's Prop centering it. Eklund. And he can't get a shot at center. Boy, the Flyers come close to getting the first goal. They're still in there. A long shot is off the net. Mark Howe winds up. Hayward stopped that. Flyers pressing now here in the second minute. Here's a pass in front. Scramble and it just misses again. Flyers want to do it tonight. You get that feeling the way they're going now. And this crowd is jumping already. Robinson. Starts away, his pass to Scrudlin. Scrudlin trying to get off, and Mark Thomas is it. Next all the netminder. Flipped an easy pass by Howe. Howe has to back up now with Ryan Walter in for checking. Ludwig's pass to Walter. Walter got it back. Good! Canadians got the first goal after the Flyers were pressing, and it's one to nothing. Bobby Smith in a perfect spot in the slot area. One time to Harry on the ice. Glove side just inside the post, but Ryan Walter did the work once the Canadians survived that threat and got the puck in the Flyers' zone. Well, it all started with a bad turnover by Mark Howe. Here's the shot, and you can see that he kept it down. He got away quickly, and Hextall couldn't quite get the puck with his left toe. And what a huge happening for Montreal to score first, especially after that prolonged stint they had in their own end of the rink, which Philly had three or four excellent opportunities. Did they ever? 2.28 the time of the first goal, though. Down at the other end, and here's a scrap breaking out. Sutter and Bobby Smith. Well, you can't say the Canadians number 15 hasn't been involved in this game, and right there he gets involved with Sutter, and they head to the penalty box. The Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC is coming to you from Philadelphia. Bobby Smith of the Canadians on the left of your screen. He has scored the goal in this hockey game, and now he, along with Ron Sutter, into the penalty box. First penalty call by referee Dave Newell. They get two minutes each for high sticking. I think it's a good sign for Montreal that Smith's involved this early. He was AWOL in game four. He's got the first goal tonight here at 228 of the opening period. Now Hayward has to be careful on that quick shot from Tukey. 
Walter and Ludwig assisted on the Smith goal, his eighth of the playoffs. Well, Smith went right along the ice to Hextall and beat him. And I think with a big, tall goalie like Hextall, that's not a bad idea. Keep it away from his best weapons, his two hands. We talked the other night, Harry, about the fact that Canadians seem to be going high, and he was so effective, especially with the stick hand. We saw it early, the best chance Canadians had before the goal. Larry Robinson went for the top corner. Hextall made the save. Canadians win the draw. And back to the net, that is Chelios. One to nothing, Canadians lead. Long pass going down the ice. This is going to be icing. And they'll bring it back as Crossman was in. Flyers have the same lineup as was the case two nights ago in game four. Montreal has made changes again. Stefan Richer, who played in game four and scored a goal, is not in uniform. And they also have Mike Lawler on the sidelines tonight, which means they're going with five defensemen because Sergio Amesso and Brian Scrudlin, two forwards, who both missed the, uh, game four, are back in uniform this evening. Well, Mike Keenan went with five defensemen the first two games of this series, although Brown has played some defense. It's a bit of a gamble, but the series has been very sensible as far from a physical viewpoint, and there haven't been a lot of fights, so perhaps Per Perron is saying, I'm going with the best five all night, so there's no need to dress a six. Carbono against Eklund, and Chelios goes around the net, trying to shake off a check, a pass hitting the line, and Ganey rolled it up on the left side for Ludwig coming in. He has stopped. Ganey brought it back in, and the Canadians are offside at the Philadelphia blue line. Well, if Mike Keenan was hoping that Philadelphia get off to a big start and get one on the board to get this, these fans going as well as his team, he's lost that hope. And Jean Perron, I mean, if he could have ordered anything for Rook service in his hotel this afternoon, it would have been an early goal. Well, he got it early this evening. In fact, we all thought that Philadelphia would have the first goal the way they came after Hayward and the Canadians in the second minute. Boy, what pressure. But then the Canadians were down the other way and Bobby Smith scored. One to nothing, Montreal. And here's how. A pass going high and down the ice. Eklund speeding in though. He got away from a check thrown at him by Ludwig. Here's how. How centered it right in front. Oh, and here's a big save. Eklund was alone in front, and Hayward made a sensational save. That'll give him a lift, believe me. And it goes, and Hextall out of the goal to knock it up on the glass, and Chelios left it there. Harbino centered it. Comes back to Ganey. He shot in and it dribbled off. His feet in front, and Jack Smith going in. Canadians pressing again. Harbino on the boards with Nyland going to the ice, and Howe taking over. Mark Howe starts away. A nice pass down to Prop. However, he just mishandled it, and it rolls into the corner. Now and behind the Canadian net. Flyers go in after it. Kordick on the ice trying to get it out. Marsh kept it in. Comes back out over the line. Kordick poked at it, and he's away. Kordick trying to shake off Eklund. And he's got a weak shot away. That's blocked by Hetstall. And Kordick was flattened after he took that weak shot. Senesalo tries to play it up on the boards and does. Canadians, Green, starting the half back again. Corson coming in. Corson dropped it back. Cordic centered it. It's deflected wide of the net by Momesso. Senesalo wheels out. He plays it to center. Smith went in after it, and it's cleared back to the center ice area. Flyers cross it to March. Two Canadians on him. Cordic, one of them. And he plays it through center ice, and then he heads off to the Montreal bench. They're coming up to the six-minute mark of the opening period. One to nothing. Canadians out front as Crossman's pass goes to center. Cecil went in, knocked down. Canadians clear it. Scrudlin coming in with Naslin. Dropped it back. Perfect play. And the shot is stopped by Hextall. What a great drop pass by Naslin. Crossman back of the goal. Philadelphia starting out, Crossman pass, hit the center Salo, and he shoots it in from his own side of center. Canadians hustling back, they get there first, Ludwig touches it, and icing is called against the Flyers. Number one in the wonder. Drive home 
Canada's number one selling car, Ford Tempo, or Canada's number one selling Mercury Topaz. Equipped with air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, AM FM stereo, rear window defroster, and 58 more standard features, all for less than $10,000. Tempo Topaz, number one, number one in the wonder. At your Ford or Mercury dealers right now. At Ford, quality is job one. At this point of the series, if you're a Flyer fan and, you say, and you're asked, who do you want to have all alone in front of the Montreal net? Who are you going to say, Harry? Right here, number nine. He's on quite a roll. and looks like he's going to get a six-game goal in three games. But no, no, says Hayward. Not tonight, my friend. And Eklund misses a great chance. One to nothing. The Canadians are leading on the Bobby Smith goal at 228. Face off to the right of Ron Hextall. Scrudeland on there for the Canadians. Poked it loose. McPhee on it. Dropped it to Nasland in the corner. He's tied up. And Howe takes it for Philadelphia. Tosses one ahead on the left side, and the Flyers come up to Sutter. Sutter tried to go in, dropped it back. Bellenby shot. That's blocked by Hayward. Canadians trying to get it out. Swoboda went back to the net with it. Now Naslin from Chelios up through the middle. Coming in on the right side is Scrutland, centered it. Hextall going down, but McPhee could pick it up in front of the net. Again, Scrutland went in there. Hextall lifted his stick and then rifled it high on the boards, and it gets out and down the ice. Nearing the seven-minute mark now, the opening period. One goal so far, that by Bobby Smith of Montreal. Sutter is hit hard at center ice by Scrudlin. Here's Scrudlin with the puck, takes a look back. Decides to fire it back of the net as the Flyers send two in for checking. Naslin couldn't move it out, got by him anyway, and went out to center ice. Rolled out there. Jellio's back. Pass to the left side. Canadians have the seven minute mark, and Bobby Smith coming in again. Smith takes his shot, waist high. And Hextall just holds it for a face-off in the Philadelphia zone. Tonight's game is coming to you from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. These days, there's a lot of different mufflers on the road. Unfortunately, that's exactly where they are. But there's one muffler you'll have a tough time finding on the road, a Motomaster muffler. It's built to last. Because when Canadian Tire installs it, both the muffler and installation are guaranteed for as long as you own your car. So while there's a lot of mufflers you'll see on the road, there's only one place you'll see a Motomaster muffler, where it belongs, on your car. Motomaster from Canadian Tire. Built tough, back tough. A lot of people feel the Canadians should get closer to Hextall, crowd the crease. He says, no, thank you. He doesn't like moments like this. Gets clipped by, who's that? Oh, it's Lemieux sliding in. He started to slide about halfway in from the blue line because <laughs> he was knocked flat. He was under the tag. In baseball, he would have been safe, but that stick hit Hextall in the mask and did no damage. That is Carbido against Zezel, and Zezel tied him up. Smith got it across the line of the center ice area, and the Canadians a little quicker tonight, getting to the puck quickly. There they are again, and it's Ganey this time to Carbido. Carbino shoots one in for Montreal. Hextall trapped it behind the net. And he lost it against Carbino. Carbino couldn't center it. Eric Smith had him stop. And the net is off the magnets. And there's a scrap in the corner. Well, Nyland. A lot of people in Montreal have wondered about Chris Nyland. Four games in the series. A minor and a major penalty at 21 minutes in two games in the regular season against Philadelphia. Well, right here... He gets into a scrap, but Harry, I thought the key in all of that was Derek Smith checking on Carbono because Hextall was way out of position. Ganey was in front of the net, and what a job Smith did to prevent Carbono from passing the puck in front of the net. He got a bit of luck as Carbono could not get the puck off the boards. Major penalties here. is giving our people special training to give you no trouble service and maybe thanks for stopping by 
that's why we're getting a lot of customers we haven't seen before. Chris Nauer of the Canadians is a veteran of the battles in the NHL. Mike Stuthers, the rookie defenseman of the Flyers, is not, but they get involved. Now here's where Carboneau can't pick the puck up off the boards. You see Hextall down on the seat of his pants, and finally Smith gets him. And then the Montreal forward, Ganey, I believe it is, is run right into the net by Samuelson. I think Nyland getting involved physically is what Montreal wants. One to nothing is the score. Smith has scored for the Canadians. And now in comes Carson for Philadelphia. Slammed up on the boards in the corner. Sutter goes in to try and dig it up, and he does. Sutter played it back, but a little too far. And it goes by Crossman down the ice. Lemieux in there watching him. Ryan Walter stopped it, but it came out over the line. He has to pass it back, allowing Lemieux to come out. Up comes Bobby Smith across center and going in. Smith gets to the slot area, hands off to Robinson. His shot is deflected by Hextall, and it's over the glass and into the crowd. Well, I loved Ron Sutter's comments on Pelly Eklund, the star of the last two games. He said, Eklund got to the National League on a lot of finesse with some hard work. I got there with a lot of hard work and just a little bit of finesse. He's got a little more finesse than people give him credit for, I think. But he's got that, he's a miserable guy. Did you see he took a run at Smith? I guess he was saying, Smith, if you're gonna score some goals, you're putting up with me all night. They played eight minutes and five seconds of the opening period. Oh. One to nothing at 228. Bobby Smith scored from Walter and Ludwig. That fella go to your barber, Harry. As down. you can see, some Flyer fans don't have the lid screwed on as tight as others. The Kremen to Howe. Flyer starts. Down the right side it goes and Tockett slaps it in. Morrison for Montreal. Trying to pick it up against Eklund. It comes loose to Prop. Prop had a stick lifted and couldn't get a shot. He was about to whip it at Hayward. Tockett was dumped on the play. And Chelios comes out. Across center. Chelios picks the left side and finds very little room. He was checked by Eklund. McCrimmon takes over. To Eklund, he gets it out to Tockett. Down across center ice to Prop, and he was nailed hard by Chelios. And that'll get them all together. Well, we have seen Montreal somehow. Jean Perron has got them in a nasty mood. And I think they have to add this dimension to their team if they want to prolong this series. And there was a great example of it as Prop was hurled into the boards with no mercy in mind. Chelios will be getting a penalty live on CBC, the Stanley Cup playoffs. When they were needed, they were there. Something inside made them deliver every time. And while the uniforms have changed, the tradition remains. We feel the same way about export, because inside where it counts, it's always been there. A distinctive, satisfying taste. Nothing halfway about it. Inside, X says it all. Fans first thought that Tris Chelios of the Canadians was the only one being penalized on that exchange, but after the fact, the flyer door opened in the penalty box area, and there is Rick Tockett. On the right of your screen, number 22. And I noticed as Tockett, as the whole thing ended, Tockett and John Cordick, who's on the bench, exchanged some verbal unpleasantries. Well, watch this. Here's the original penalty. Chelios comes awfully late. And not too often can you get under prop stick like he did there. And that's one penalty. Now you're going to see 22 for Philadelphia come roaring in to get the other one. Because we're not going to see it. At the nine-minute mark, of the first period. 1-0 Montreal. Carbonell went in there ahead of the play. Offside. Bobby Smith has scored the goal at 228 from Walter and Ludwig. You think Guy Carbonell had to grow that mustache because he couldn't shave around his cut or is he getting pretty suave? Oh, I think it's Guy fat lip Carbonell in the playoffs. He's taken a bit of a beating. I noticed they had Corson out against Eklund earlier in the game, but right here, a little more predictable perhaps, it's Carbonell checking on him. Robinson played it in to Swoboda. That does not work too well, and Robinson starts back again to Naslund. Naslund lost
Cross hit at the blue line. Crump gives it to McCrimmon. Flyers shoot it in. And Swoboda takes over for Montreal. Gives it to Robinson. He has to hustle to the corner. Naslund is there with him, but Howe had him checked. McCrimmon back for Philadelphia. High pass, scoop near center by Swoboda. Philadelphia coming back in. It's played by Derek Smith into the corner. Smith going in for checking. Good work by Smith to slice it over in front of Hayward. And the goaltender just rolled it back to the net. Robinson starts out slowly. The pass to Carbonell. Naslund up on the play. Carbonell wanting to go to the bench. Tried to shoot it in and missed it. And Zanzel back up upended. Cordick coming in for Montreal. Cordick take the shot. Screwed into Cordick. He centered it. And it's played back into the corner. And the Flyers try to cover up. Zanzel fell on it. And it comes right back to him as he got up. Zanzel to center ice. Zezel had it poked away by Rick Green, and then Green was hit by Zezel. And 20 gone in the opening period, and it's one to nothing, Canadians. Flyers can end the series tonight, remember. The Canadians want to prolong the series and get back to Montreal. Out to center. McPhee to Scrooglund in there with a shot. A low shot stopped by Hextall. He had the angle all the way. Green backs up on his own blue line. He couldn't hit Ryan Walter with a pass. Sutter went after Walter. The two players go to the ice. Lemieux coming out. Lemieux has to circle to the far side. Now he goes in and centered it. And the Philadelphia Flyers clear it out. Nine minutes left in the opening period. Robinson starts away. A pass to Swoboda. He fired one in on the boards. Hextall misses this one. Comes back to Howell, though, and he got it out. Mellonby up there with Eklund going in. Eklund failed to get by Robinson. Robinson couldn't take the puck away from Eklund the second time. The Canadians get it out to Lemieux. Lemieux's long shot off the glove of Hextall, and it dribbles wide. 8.30 left to the period. Canadians lead, one to nothing. Howe played it along the board. Prop coming out. Prop had it hooked back in by Ryan Walter. And Prop has to go back as the Canadians make changes now. Pass to the right wing. Here's Sinisalo going in. Centered it. And Corson was the only one in front of the net. And he just calmly cleared it out. Crossman fired a pass to Eklund again. Eklund dangerous now on this ship. Takes his shot at Hayward. Covering the angle. Puck bounces down in front. And it's cleared out. To center ice, Mameso. Mameso stopped by Marsh. Marsh will take him in on the boards. Puck goes to the corner, though. In there is Darlene and Eklund again. Starts the play. Crossman is down to center. Sinisalo on his right. Derek Smith with him. Offside, Sinisalo. And that stops the play with 7.32 remaining in the period. McDonald's is making bacon, bacon double cheese. There's something about that bacon taste, it's as good as taste can be. Hey, I get that sizzle, bacon double cheese. McDonald's is making bacon double cheeseburgers again. And two all beef patties, a slice of processed cheese, and bacon in every bite taste Canadians love. Just $1.69. Bacon double cheese. Drop everything, because McDonald's is making bacon. Just $1.69. Bob Cole with Dick Irvin, Harry Neal, Ron McLean, and Don Cherry at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. The Canadians on a goal by Bobby Smith at 2.28 of this opening period. Are leading one to nothing. Seven and a half minutes left in the period. Zessel waved off. Brown is in. Against Scrudland. Puck dropped in and Philadelphia. Derek Smith rolled it into Zessel. Zessel can't get loose for his shot. Hayward reaches out to knock into the corner. Zessel centered. They score. Smith got the goal, but dogged work by Zessel set it up. Well, a typical Philadelphia goal, a result of good hard board checking by Smith. And his buddy Zessel wasn't taken out strongly enough in front. Or sorry, Smith was in front. And you can see Ludwig has him. Then he wants to know where the puck is. I don't think he knows here. 
and as quick as a flash, a little too late for Ludwig, Smith redirects the puck into the net, and it's 1-1 on what looked like a rather harmless situation. The one-on-one -on -one there basically was Zezel against Chelios, and the Flyer player hunts up on the board. Canadians are back in there very quickly. McPhee shot. Nice gate save by Hextall. Chelios trapped it up the blue line. Kept it in. 12.28 the time of the goal by Derek Smith of the Flyers. 1-1 one, one the score. High shot goes in on the glass. Play comes to the blue line and it's Naslund coming down to center. Naslund's pass to Skrudlev. He got in there but Hextall whipped it away. Stopped by Naslund, a penalty coming up. Naslund was flattened from behind by Scott Mellonby and he's going off. This is Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. My competitive edge, customer service nationwide through telemarketing. Glad to be of help. It's that simple. Here, Chief. A customer service? Uh, your filbert flange won't mesh with your grapple grommet. No problem. Lonely. See, a satisfied customer is a repeat customer. You're welcome. We make grapple grommets? 23,000 a day. Awesome. Business long distance from Bell. Scott Mellamy of the Flyers, who scored what proved to be the game winner two nights ago, in the box for cross-checking on Matt Naslin. Harry, you mentioned the Canadians in a nasty mood tonight. They've been fortunate not to draw a couple of penalties. And just before this, Naslin left his feet and tried to make contact with McCrimmon, which he didn't do. He's hardly known as a Swedish goon. In any event, he draws a penalty a few seconds later, and Mellamy's in the box. Well, Dave Newell, and the team should know this by now, because Newell's done a number of games involving both these teams. He's very particular on fouls from behind. That's one of his favorite calls, and he calls them more often than most officials do. Bobby Smith at 228 from Walter and Ludwig, one to nothing, and then Derek Smith tied it for Philadelphia, 1237 from Zezel and Brown. Now the Canadians with a man advantage with Mellonby in the penalty box. And the Canadians are five for 11 on the power play in this series. That's pretty hot at the blue line. Robinson to Chalios, shoots. Low shot, over near the net. Chalios hoping it would hit somebody in front or somebody could tip it. There's Naslin, got it back. Robinson has to hustle to Naslin. In front it comes, and Howe is covering on his man in front of the net. Sutter is there now. Sutter slapped it on the boards, and the Flyers get it down the ice. Hayward comes out watching Prop. Put it by Prop and out to Larry Robinson. There goes Chelios. Rolled it into the corner. Jezel hustling back. Gets it on the boards. Robinson stopped it. And it's Mark Howe clearing it out and down the ice again. A minute left to the penalty to Mellonby of Philadelphia. Canadians haven't had a shot on the net yet. Up is Bobby Smith, who has scored the Montreal goal here in the first period. Bobby Smith to the corner, away from Marsh. Bobby Smith back of the net, Lemieux comes in to help him. Smith gets the puck loose again, around the goal a second time. Now he centers and Robinson waits, scores! Robinson drills back out a shot. And the Canadians get a power play goal, and they lead it two to one. And Hextall hammered Claude Lemieux, who had been screening him on the play. Lemieux ended up on the ice after the goal went in, and Hextall dropped on Lemieux and tried to get a one, two, three pin. He tried to jam a stick down Lemieux's throat is what he did. He was very upset at the interference. Now you watch Hextall's stick. Here's the goal. Robinson waits, makes a nice shot through a crowd. Now watch Hextall. They actually get pushed in there by Crossman. And if we see him fall, see there's Lemieux, 32. Trying to fend off Crossman. The puck goes through those three players. Hextall missed it or didn't see it. Now watch Hextall after he gets him down. The stick right down your throat, he says, if you do this again. Easy, Harry, easy. They not quite that well, I bad. Know it, I know it doesn't fit, but that doesn't mean you can't try and make it fit. Second. This is number 15, Frank Ludwig. 
Chelios and Ludwig assisting on the goal by Robinson. And the time was 14.48. Our play goal, the Canadians are ahead again. Philadelphia's talking from the corner. Flyers right back looking for the tying goal again with less than five minutes to play in the period. That's Prop on the boards. Prop digging it out, long shot, deflected high. Eklund after it on the other side. Eklund rolled it back of the goal. Prop is back there. Tockett got it in front. Here's Howe. And stopped by Hayward who came out to cut the angle on Mark Howe on the backhander. Well, Brian Hayward thrown into the breach tonight. Were you surprised, Terry? Because it was, you know, the one thing to talk about all day was who's going to play goal for Montreal. Well, I tossed it around. I couldn't make my own mind up. Thank goodness I didn't have to. But it looks like Perron made a good decision here. Watch how Hayward comes out. Square, very square, top of the circle, top of the crease. I don't think Mark Howe could see anything. And then he controls the rebound. Montreal looks a lot more confident tonight than they did in either game in Montreal after the first period of the third game. This guy here, Mark Howe, is revered by his teammates just the way his father was by his team. Four minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the first period. Smith and Robinson, the goal scorers for Montreal, and Derek Smith got his fifth of the playoffs. And Zezel and Brown, the Philadelphia goal at 12.37. Dave Newell, the experienced referee, this is the first final he's done in three years, not because of poor years. He's been hurt the last two years, so it's nice to see Newell refereeing this late in May. This is the semifinal. I was maybe three games ahead of myself. That's the conference final. I, I don't know what the argument is here. Is it the position of the face-off? The Canadians started after Newell when it all began. The Flyers then took over when the Montreal players skated away. And he's saying, look, I made the decision. That's where the face-off is. Let's go. Well, it was the goaltender who smothered the puck after Howe threw the backhander at him. And the face-off is off to the left of Hayward. And Swede knocks as the linesman there, waiting to drop it in between Carbonell and Sutter. Carson of Philadelphia in along the boards. He holds it with a skate. Now Sutter, he fights for it. They usually come up with it. There's Sutter. He's knocked down on this occasion by Carbonell. The pass to the line, tipped away by Carbonell, but not out. Bellamby keeping it in. Bellamby on the boards, tied up by Carbonell. Ganey comes over, and they'll get another whistle for a face-off inside. The Montreal blue line, these two teams are going at it tonight, gentlemen. Highland risking a penalty, perhaps, coming in well after the fact. The whistle had gone for several seconds before he made contact along the boards. Good for Nyland. Get in there and make yourself known, Chris. We haven't seen enough of that from you in the last two games especially, and you have no idea what that does for his teammates. And although Philadelphia is a tough team, they want to know where number 30 is out there when he's in this kind of a mood. Well, he's in this kind of a mood tonight, Nylon. Watched him walk in this evening with the other Canadians, and you can see that determined look. And uh, we're... Where are my, my skates? Where's my uniform? Let me get at this thing. He's already had one scrap tonight. I believe he's hit a lot of people on four checking plays. Well, I'm not suggesting you should see how many fights he can get in, but he should keep tally, uh, count of how many takeouts he's got. Kremen for Philadelphia. Rolled it up there for Tockett. He's draped by Ludwig. Canadians can't clear it out. Vesso had a chance. Tockett now centered it. And there's a low shot that just misses. Prop was in front. He's there again. And his backhander was wide, but there's going to be a penalty to the Montreal Canadiens. Tockett got it in front, and then Prop was grabbed as he let the backhander go. Well, Dave Newell, I think, thought that he let Ludwig get away with a debatable what? pin in the corner. On Tockett, definitely. And then said, uh, I can't let this guy do it twice, and watch what 17 for Montreal does to Prop. He may well have saved the goal doing it. We've got Kordick chatting things up with Tockett in a bit of a scrum as they make the announcement on the Ludwig penalty. Faceoff will be in the Canadian zone. 
Certainly Montreal not shying away from the physical aspect of the game tonight, Harry, and it is so noticeable in their play after what we saw in the last two games at the Forum. Well, it's not easy to play that way on a nightly basis because it hurts sometimes when you're delivering uh, those body checks, but I think they realize they better revert back to the form that got them where they are at the moment see if it works three more times. Philadelphia has scored three power play goals in the series in nine attempts. So that's better than 30%. Both power plays, Canadians and Philadelphia Flyers, have been good in this series. Canadians have already scored a power play goal tonight. Now Philadelphia would like to tie it right here. Prop, he's bumped by Carbonell. Still has control of it, though. Now Carbonell got it loose, but Crossman was there. Again, it's back to Crossman. Along the boards to Prop again. Crossman moving up. Prop fading back, and he just keeps it inside. Now Prop from the line, beats a pass right to Chelios, who is standing in front of Hayward. He hangs on to it, killing some time. Now he goes in. He nearly got by everybody. But here's Eklund coming out. Eklund going across the line for Philadelphia. On with the breaks in the corner. Out dumped at the blue line. Chelios hit him there. Now it's Crossman to Howe. Oh, backhands a pass into the corner. It's center, Crossman! And he couldn't control it in front of Hayward. Canadians try to clear it out, and they do get it out and down the ice. Chelios was without a stick for a dozen seconds or more. Eklund is moving up, has to turn. Eklund from center ice. Laid it in on the right side to Tukey, and offside is called. Tockett was in there with 2.40 left in the period. One thing that is interesting to note as the Canadians head into this game, if the Flyers are to eliminate Montreal, they will mean that'll mean they've beaten them three straight times. Montreal has not lost three in a row since the 19th, 20th, and 22nd of January. Uh, twice to Hartford and once to Boston in that string. So they've been on a pretty good roll. Over 17,000 to hear again tonight. Sellout at the Spectrum. 40 left in the period and 51 seconds left in the Ludwig penalty. Two to one, Canadians. That is Zessel, 25, against Corson of Montreal, 27. And Corson wins it. Robinson right away. Fired it on the boards by Howe down the ice. Hextall waits for Crossman. Crossman starting out slowly with 40 seconds left in this power play. Up to the line and the center is Mark Howe. Played it on the right wing. Tukey going in. Tukey stops. Waits for somebody to go into the slot area. Tukey now. Lost it, but it's Crossman shooting. That stop. And McBee fired it down the ice. Good play by McBee. 20 seconds left in the Canadiens' penalty. The Flyers have to hustle down. To win one more time. That pass too far for Tukey. Robinson lost it in front of the net. Here's a chance, right to the side of the goal. Center Salo dropped it back to Marsh. Marsh takes a shot, that's off the stick. Carson lost the stick on the shot. But the Canadians are out anyway. Bobby Smith and McBee, who is in offside. And the Canadians have killed the penalty. Coming up in our first intermission, Derek Smith will be my guest, and Don Cherry is along in the coach's corner. As the Canadians went up ice on that last rush led by Larry Robinson, Craig Ludwig left the penalty box, so they killed that particular short-handed situation. 10-9, the shots on goal in favor of Montreal to this point, with a minute 46 remaining here in the first period. Well, one of Philadelphia's theories is that they think they're in better shape than most teams in the National League, and that if they can enter the third period, this is Keenan's, uh, one of his uh, ideas, if they can enter the third period close, they think they can take advantage of their superior physical condition. I'll tell you something, Harry, their reserves are in the best shape of any <laughs> reserves I've seen. Ed Hospodar was here this morning. He has not played in this series. I guess Paul Holmgren worked him for more than half an hour full out. Well, the, the guys they brought up from Hershey have been going twice a day and working out on the weights once until the start of this series. So Keenan's theory is that if I may have to go to you and I don't want you to tell me you need a game or two to get feeling good, you have to feel good the first shift you're out there. 
1.30 left in this first period. Ryan Walter tapped one down as Philadelphia failed to move up. Bobby Smith turning it back on and going in. Bobby Smith had it knocked off his stick, but Ryan Walter was there. Walter going in after it again to help Smith. Walter is hit on the boards. Smith got his skate on it. Now it comes loose. And there's Smith again, going the other way. Tried to flip it back to the blue line, but he's knocked down by Marsh. Smith on the puck, but it comes loose into the final minute of this first period. Philadelphia, Derek Smith shoots it in. Hayward out of the net to clear it away on the far side, and now the Canadians out again. Chelios long shot, gloved by Hextall. And Hextall waits now. The Flyers were changing. He just held on to it. Philadelphia's McCrimmon backhands it in and took a funny hop, and that nearly fooled Hayward. It nearly went in. <laughs> Stick was high. That would have been the goal of the series, I'll tell you, had it counted. Larry Robinson, was it? Put the stick up, and bingo, behind him, behind Hayward, and just wide of the net. And Robinson should take a leaf out of a goaltender's book. Don't touch anything that's going wide. And here is just why you might think that that's not a bad idea. I wonder what Hextall thought at the other end. The goaltenders stick together after the game in Montreal two nights ago, and they asked him about the shot by prop that got by Patrick Roy from the blue line. He said, oh, that dropped a good two or three feet. I don't think there was a goalie in the league that have stopped that shot. They hang tough, those fellas. There's Larry saying, I'm sorry on that one, uh, Mr. Hayward. I won't do that again. No damage on that one, but it was close. 28 seconds to play in the period. Two to one, Montreal. Fires gaining the face off again, and how shoots. Hayward with the blocker made the save, and the Canadians dump it out. They want to go to the first intermission with a one-goal lead, and it looks like they will with only 15 seconds left in the period. And the Flyers clear it to center ice. Robinson will play to the far side. Now it's dumped to center with five seconds left in the period. Philadelphia get it in. They're offside with now just two seconds left, and the Canadians will, in fact, have that one-goal lead after the first 20 minutes. Well, they have achieved one of their goals tonight, and that was to win the first period. And when you're down three to one, you better not look any further than one period at a time, or you're going to be out. First period, Canadians out shooting Flyers, 10 to nine. And the score at the end of the first period, Montreal two, Philadelphia one. question. What's the red drink Canadians really go for? Red? Lots come out on room. It's popular. Big shots love this stuff. And we could pipe it into people's homes. Pipe it in? Turn on one tap, Mott's Clamato. Turn on the other, extra spicy. All we need is some investors, Norm, for pipes and stuff. Investors? Yeah. Good idea, eh? Advanced floor covering in the Pureless Fashion Showplace. Quality carpets, vinyl flooring, color coordinating, exclusive products. We've got all the answers and all the products from the two fashion innovators, Pureless and Congolium. Trust the professionals at Advanced Floor and Walk Covering for your Pureless Carpet and Congolium no wax vinyl floors. Nobody offers you more one-stop expertise in advanced flooring and Pureless Carpet. Pureless Carpet is the name to remember. Advanced Floor Covering is the name you can trust. Serving the flooring needs of Windsor and Essex County for over 30 years at 2550 McDougall. Bright ideas in Portulana figurines from the Lighting Boutique. Imported works of art, an exciting addition to the newly expanded showrooms of the Lighting Boutique. And this week, at 25% off. 25% off Portulana figurines. Another bright idea from Ray Batow's Lighting Boutique. 
4072 Walker Road, Windsor. Bobby Smith and Derek Smith for Philadelphia, then Larry Robinson on the power play, and that's the go-ahead goal. The Montreal Canadiens lead the Philadelphia Flyers 2-1 after one period of play. Three years ago, the Flyers had three Toronto draft picks arrive. Nobody expected any of them to make it. All three made it to the lineup. One of them's my guest in this first intermission, and he's Derek Smith, who is on a rampage uh, in this series scoring goals. And that's not been your forte through the last three seasons, but you must be delighted to be scoring uh, big goals at that. Oh, definitely I am. Uh, you know, I've had a little trouble. Last year I was had a bad year, and this year things went a lot better for me, and now in the playoffs I'm, you know, I'm having a, a good playoffs and scoring, and I'm very pleased about it and hope I can, can continue. Was the first round of this playoff series a confidence builder for you? I know you were assigned to check Thomas Sandstrom. You did a good job of that, and really you started scoring there. Yeah, I like uh, being a role player, and that's what I was put on against the Rangers. I, I was... Uh, against Thomas Sanson to check them all all series and uh, I think he only ended up with one goal so uh, and I ended up with a couple so I think uh, things worked out and gave me some confidence just by uh, that series. What about this game tonight? Well it's a big game for both clubs uh, you know Montreal has their back against the wall now and we just have to keep going out there and taking it to them. Uh, we can't let up at all we, we sort of learned a lesson from the New York Islanders we had them three to one and we let them back in the series and we can't do that with Montreal. But do you feel you did that in the first 20 minutes? Well, I think both teams uh, came up fired up, and they just happened to get a, you know, an extra goal, and uh, we just have to keep shooting in the second period, and hopefully it'll go in for us. When you did join the Flyers, how big a role did Dave Poulin play in your adjustment uh, in this city? Well, my first year, I lived with Dave Poulin, and he's a great leader, great captain, and he helped me out tremendously. All the young players that come into the organization, he almost takes you under his wing and, you know, tells you how what it's going to be like on the road and different teams and players and different things to do and he just uh, is an incredible uh, player and a great inspiration for all of us. And quickly, uh, do you think the weight gain in the offseason, 15 pounds, has been a big factor in improving your play? I think so. I, I feel a lot stronger this year on the puck. Uh, I'm not getting knocked off like I was last year. Well done. Derek, uh, congratulations on the goals in this playoff series, three of them against Montreal. 3-2 after two. We'll be back in a moment. in the taste it'll stop you cold Molson Canadian can your motor oil take the heat when today's engines reach high running temperatures motor oil can thin out break down and leave engine surfaces unprotected but Castrol XLR has been engineered to maintain a lubricating film, even at extreme engine temperatures. At Castrol, we believe if you can't take the heat, get out of the engine. Castrol XLR, the oil engineered for today's cars. Look for Castrol XLR at these leading retailers. You've searched, you've experienced, and now you know what it is you really want. Mercury Sable. The beautiful new style of success is ready and waiting for you. Take off in a car that embodies all the best of tomorrow's technology today. Mercury Sable. The wait is over. There's never been a better time to buy and take immediate delivery. Mercury Sable. Sedan or wagon. Everything you've always wanted is here and now at your Mercury dealer. Continuing poverty, disparity and violence. The most popular actor in North America. Up front. Up Close, The Journal, with Barbara Frum. Coach's Corner, with Don Cherry. Brought to you by Tremco, makers of Tremclad, Canada's number one rust paint. Before we get into anything, I think I said the score was 3-2. I got so excited. He's got three goals in the series, two elsewhere in the playoffs, but it's 2-1. Uh, to one Just proves your One period, right. that's right. Just How about uh, Philadelphia Flyers in Montreal? And uh, you said the key was to get to Hextall. Do you feel the Canadians did so? Well, I, I don't know if they got to him. They got two goals. But, you know, 
Those big tall guys with those big feet and the big pads, uh, the shot is along the ice. That's the shot that, fortunately for us, uh, when we were playing uh, Montreal, when we were playing Boston, it, uh, unfortunately, I should say for us, we found out two games before he retired that those shots along the ice, not too hard, they lose them down there. And you weren't surprised uh, that Brian Hayward started for Montreal this evening? No, uh, he, he, you're playing it safer there. He's played all the time. Uh, I think Jacques Perron uh, give it a good shot with Patrick Juan. I don't think he played bad at all. I, uh, that Sutter goal was just in off the post, and uh, Hextall was right. It did drop that uh, long shot. Uh, who was it? I forget now. Uh, the long shot in this game. Yeah, prop. Oh, in, in, in the props, game the other yeah. night. So I don't think he played bad at all. And uh, it was a good shot, but you had to go with Hayward because he's played so many good games. The low shot in this game, the long shot in the other game. What about uh, as far as uh, Montreal getting uh, off and running early in this hockey game, do you think it took the crowd out of it? Well, I don't know about the crowd. It, you don't pay, you're into the game now. You don't ever hear the crowd. This is a good crowd, but when, once you get into a game like this, if you start worrying about the crowd, you're in deep trouble. If you start worrying about the Swedes, uh, you're in deep trouble, but you have to think about them. Mats Naslin leads the Canadians in scoring. Pelle Eklund leads the Philadelphia Flyers. Sweden won the gold medal. Uh, come on, Don. Well, look, uh, I, this is my opinion, a lot of opinion. I, I've got, if you're telling me if I could have Mats Naslin on my team or somebody like that, I'd have them, but uh, they don't show up every game, and that, that's the truth. Uh, I don't know why. I think it might be their socialist uh, background. Uh, if you want to go to work, uh, if it's raining, you don't have to go. Or and if you don't feel good, you don't go. And I don't know what it is, but some games, they don't show up. Are you telling me Eklund uh, got 14 goals last year, 15 to go a year before? If he put out the effort like he did the last game, he wouldn't have 50 or 60 goals? Come on. Well, he does have uh, key goals in this series, and I'm not sure about the politics, but the campaign manager should think about it quickly. The Oilers in their series against Detroit, your thoughts? Well, I, I like the way the Oilers are playing. A lot of people are going to say, well, they don't look good. Uh, they're just beating Detroit. I think they're playing a more control game, and everybody seems to be on Gretzky. He's not scoring a lot of goals. He's playing de better defensive now than he ever did. Oh, you're right. In their series against Winnipeg, they allowed the Jets to score just nine goals and seven so far against Detroit. The Oilers are rolling. Here it's 2-1 after one, and we'll be right back. Coach's Corner with Don Cherry has been brought to you by Tremco, makers of Valspar Superthane and a complete line of wood care products. It's still raining. 40 days! I need a good floor varnish. Better yet. Valspar Superthane for floors and furniture. If it's your best, I haven't much time. Superthane is beautiful. Big floor. 15,000 square cubic. Hey, big house. Big house. A lot of traffic. Traffic. We're talking animals. Do the job right with clear, durable Valspar Superthane for beautiful floors. And beautiful furniture. Kelly? Yeah, Mom? Are you nervous? A little. Kelly, I'm John. Come on. Let's see what you can do. At 3M, we understand Olympic dreams don't happen alone. They need coaches. Careful. When you buy official 3M or Scotch brand products, 3M will make a contribution to Olympic coaching and help make the dream a reality. So, how did it go? We did great. 3M, supporting the dream. Speedy Muffler King picks you up fast and good with the famous Speedy Guarantee and a little somebody treatment. I see you got your Pagliacci fixed, eh, bud? There are lots of power tools. There are even some cordless power tools. And then there's Makita. After you've had your hands on Makita cordless, you'll know what it feels like to have real power and real freedom. The Makita cordless system. We haven't just cut the cord, we've left it far behind. With interchangeable NICAD battery, one-hour charger, and more kinds of cordless tools than anyone. Makita Cordless. Power plus freedom.
Shots on goal in the opening period, 10-9 in favor of the Montreal Canadiens, and they lead on the scoreboard 2-1. The go-ahead goal was late in the first period on the power play. Larry Robinson scores the goal at 14:48. Robinson with the pass, and then the shot through a load of traffic. Ron Hextall can't get at it. There's confusion in front as Crossman takes out Lemieux, and then Hextall takes out Lemieux as well. But it's 2-1, the Canadians with the lead after 20 minutes of play. Stamina might be a factor in this hockey game this evening. The temperature has hovered around 85 degrees in the Philadelphia area over the last couple of days. And it was very muggy in the building this evening as the game got underway. And one stat to remember, in the third period of games in the playoffs, the Flyers have outscored their opponents 23-15. to So the Canadians will try to ensure that they maintain the pace in the remaining two periods. It's 2-1 after one. The second period's on deck live on CBC. This is Hockey Night in Canada and the Stanley Cup playoffs. You might see this as a quiet drive in the country, but there's another way to look at it. As 3,000 pounds of steel and glass hurtling down the highway, that's how Canadian Tire sees your car when we install brakes. For over 65 years, we've trained our technicians to be the best. That's why we guarantee your brakes for as long as you own your car. Because to us, the most important parts of any drive are the stops along the way. The right choice for auto service has never been so clear. Canadian Tire. The all-new Mazda SE5. An amazing combination of sporty good looks and outstanding value. It comes with white race lettered radials and white spoker wheels. It comes with sport striping and rear step bumper. It comes with cloth seats, oversized dual sport mirrors. Plus the best warranty in the business. And it goes for... $93.95. That's close to competitors' base model prices. Amazing. Amazing Mazda. Whatever your financial goals are, the life insurance industry has the products to help you achieve them. We offer RRSPs and a wide choice of savings and retirement income plans. We can help you build for the future and provide guaranteed protection for you and your family. A sound, secure financial plan can help you achieve tomorrow's goals without sacrificing your enjoyment of today. Talk to your life insurance agent about the best way to achieve financial security. This magic moment So different and so new Was like any other And I saw you And then it happened Hmm, Molson Canadian Taste that'll stop you cold. This magic moment, so different and so new. For millions of Canadians, it's their window to the world, an essential view of what's happening from the most credible sources. The National with Nolton Nash. <laughs> Hockey Night in Canada and the Stanley Cup Playoffs, a Canadian tradition. The form in Montreal was the scene for victories by Philadelphia in games three and four of the Prince of Wales Championship Series. Should the series require a sixth game, the form will also be the venue. That's game six, Philadelphia and Montreal at 7.30. Okay, the two teams are back on for the start of the second period. The Canadians lead two to one. On goals by Bobby Smith. And Robinson, Robinson's goal, a power play goal. Derek Smith scored for Philadelphia at 12.37. The shots, Montreal 10 and the Flyers 9. A close period, though. Not much to choose between the two teams in the first period tonight. And as I mentioned earlier, Montreal, Montreal appears to be much more confident and under control tonight than they were in the form. Corson against Eklund at center ice. And Corson wins the draw to start the second period. Omeso couldn't hang on to that pass near center ice. Gellio stepping up to shoot it in. Hextall stops it behind the net. McCrimmon played it over on the left side and Prop gets it out. Eklund there. He saw a check coming from Chelios. And he couldn't handle it. The play is called. And the puck hit sweet Knox and slowed up and so a pass that would have got to Eklund in plenty of time got there a little late and Chelios was planning on arriving at the same time and Eklund heard him or smelled him or saw him coming and got out of his way. Chelios was coming. Believe me, from center ice he had him lined up. There's Chelios scooping one in. 
And it's into the corner where McCrimmon backs it over this way. McCrimmon has to go in again. The Canadian's in in a hurry, and Ganey's shot is off the mark. He had a good opportunity there. Hurry to the back. Here's Mark Howe stepping in. Takes his shot. That's blocked by Chelios. Chelios takes the puck away. Comes in front of the net. Dropped the pass to Ganey. He does not see it. Pocket centered it. Prop shot. Stopped by Hayward. Eklund in. And he misses the goal. Philadelphia coming very close. They're in there again at the side of the net. Green trying to dig it out. He went off balance. Now he gets a pass away. Chelios rolled it up to center. Chelios has it dropped back to him. Centered it. Here's a rebound. And it's cleared away by Marsh. A good play. Senesalo in for Philadelphia. Dropped it back to Marsh. Coming in from the line. He backhands it in around the net. Crossed it on the other side. Traffic in front. Canadians dial it. Misses it. It's onside. Puck goes around the net. And Chelios takes a look. Now he rolls it ahead. Bobby Smith couldn't clear the zone. Philadelphia pressing. Bobby Smith going in. Zezel bumping him, giving him a ride in the corner. Canadians Ryan Walter pushed off the puck, but he gets it out to center ice. Jenna Sallow dropped it over to Marsh. Lemieux knocked it down, and Marsh has it again. He loses it. Crossman, though, right there to throw it on the glass. And he got it up to center ice. Two minutes gone in the second period. Two to one, Montreal. Marsh slapped it away. Marsh again. Can't come up with it. Bobby Smith tied him up. Smith got a skate on the puck. Hooked it loose. Zessel is there, though, for Philadelphia. Gets it up on the right side, and it goes down to the Montreal zone. Robinson back, and Derek Smith chasing him. Robinson gets away from Smith, and away he goes. He had some room. Robinson shoots. High shot. It bounces on the glass and comes down to Sutter. Ron Sutter to McCrimmon. He steered it to the line. Derek Smith gets it up through the middle. Mellonby going in after it. Hayward out of the net. Hayward scooped it away, and McPhee, a one-on-one -on -one now. It is going to be Lemieux McPhee catching up. And Lemieux waits there, and he gave it away to Mark Howe. Bellamy up with him. Mark Howe dropped it back. Carson shot, rebound. Hayward sensational on the move. It comes in front of the Canadians, just to get away with it. And it goes over the glass into the crowd. But the Flyers come close to tying it. From the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. There's no deal sweeter than a rose in a deal. There's no deal sweeter, there's no deal sweeter than that. I said there's no deal sweeter than a rose in a deal. There's no deal sweeter, you know there's no deal sweeter than that. Come on out of Scarborough, why we're number one? No deal sweeter, sweeter. The Montreal Canadiens lead this game 2-1, to one, but if they are to go on and win it, one thing they've got to get out of their collective system, the giveaway syndrome. My goodness, Harry, tonight they've been both ends of the rink, their end and the Flyers' end. And all of this started with a bad giveaway by Lemieux at the Philadelphia Blue Line. He tried to lob a soft pass across the line to the defenseman Robinson, who was trailing the play, and it got intercepted, and then Larry Robinson finds out he's going the wrong way and made quite a move to get back in the player. It would have been a three-on-one. Three minutes and nine seconds into the second period. Montreal facing elimination. In Stanley Cup play. Philadelphia leading the series three games to one. Canadians up a goal in this one. Two to one. Chelios takes it around the net with Ludwig there. McCrimmon stopped the pass. And the Flyers are going to play it back in over the line. Ludwig, though, shoots it back out. McCrimmon turns. Got away from Scrudlin. Chalios there, and he nearly hit Eklund with that pass in front of Hayward. Myers forechecking very well now. Coming in as Tockett. It's loose to Eklund, back of the net to Prop. Prop gets it back to the line to Mark Howe, his shot. That's blocked in front of the net, and Scrudlin clears it out of the zone. Naslin there. He wants to back up with it. Naslin lost it, but Carboneau had it on his skate. Now Naslund is in, and Carboneau fired it in. 
Haslam finally clears the zone, and McCrimmon is back. Up through center. Finds a little bit of room for himself and slapped it off to the corner. Sinisalo was the first one in there, beating Swoboda to it by the Canadians. Sent two players down, led by Naslin. He's in over the line. Naslin gets set, won't shoot it. He falls. The Flyers nearly poke it out. Here's Sinisalo coming out with Derek Smith. Sinisalo's shot deflected by Green, and it's into the crowd. Number 23 for the Philadelphia Flyers, Ilka Sinisalo. He's had some injury problems as well this season. He's in his sixth year. Player from Finland missed 38 games, almost half a season. They have, the Flyers have gone over the 200-player game mark as far as injuries are concerned. Games missed because of injuries, both regular season and playoffs. They used 40 players during the course of the regular season. That's a lot of hockey players. I think only the Rangers used more. And they've used 27 so far in the playoffs, which is an awful lot. Four minutes, 28 seconds gone in the second period. Two to one the score. Canadians, but the Flyers are pressing here to start the second. However, this is a pass back to Mameso. His quick shot blocked by Hextall, no problem. Derek Smith takes it, got to the line and cleared it to center ice. And a saddle poked it by Swoboda and covering up the other defenseman, Rick Green. Green on the board, Sinisalo took it away from him. Tukey centered it. Amesso can't clear it. It got by Samuelson and out into the center eye zone. Hayward steps behind the net. Swoboda goes in there. Derek Smith in watching him. Swoboda's pass finding Amesso at the line. Rink wide through center. And Darlene is offside. Live on CBC Hockey Night in Canada. Lemieux will have to hustle in there, but Marsh was in quickly, and Marsh takes it to Crossman. He slapped it to the center ice zone. Ludwig played it up on the skates of Bobby Smith. Now Bobby Smith from Robinson, going up over the line, and he was jammed out of the play by Marsh. Crossman back of the net, trying to tie up. Lemieux centered it, and it's knocked away, but Ludwig at the blue line, trying to keep it in. And does, Brown failed to pick it up. Now they hold it on the boards, just inside the line. And here we go again. Brown, who hasn't played very much, didn't take too kindly to being run into the boards in front of the Montreal bench. And as you could see, he shot back with his elbow. I wonder if Dave Mill called him. Hockey Night in Canada, a Stanley Cup tradition. After 21 miles, it's number 18. No, it's number five. Leading by eight, maybe 900 meters. Where's he going? Ah, Quaterio. Sure. You look like you could be a winner. I certainly hope so. Do you know, with Quaterio, there are around 100,000 winners every week. And they're all cash prizes. Oh, isn't this fun? It sure is. May I have your autograph, please? I'd love to, but I gotta run. Oh. <laughs> Dave Newell did not call Dave Brown of Saskatoon for a penalty here, as you wonder. But I'll tell you what Brown did as he was skating off the edge of the line change. He flicked his stick at the general direction of the face mask being worn by Claude Lemieux, up, who was by then sitting on the bench. Here is Eklund for Philadelphia. The shot off Telios. Goes wide of the net. Canadians start out, but they don't get too far. Here's Eklund again. Eklund gets in the slot, but passes to Tockett in the corner. And he can't center it by Green. 
Harmon over, skates it on the other side. Philadelphia, board checking well. Keeping the puck inside the line. Look at this. Now Carbonell, he just barely got it across the line. And it slides down to McCrimmon. Nearing the seven minute mark, second period. And it's two to one Montreal. Green coming back. Flyers make changes. Sinisello on the ice. Dumped down the ice by Chelios. Island moving up and the play is offside and they'll bring it back. Rick Tockett. This young guy's a typical flyer winger. Big, and tough, and mean, and maybe most important, improving quickly as an all-around player. He loves those body checks. He plays like an iceberg, hunting around for the Titanic. Coming up to the seven-minute mark now, the second period. Pace has slowed a little bit. Maybe that's because of the Flyers' board checking here against Canadians. Habs having trouble organizing inside their own zone to start something flowing. Puck back of the net. Swoboda overskates it, allowing the Flyers a little more time to get in deeper. Now they get it out on a good play. Skruglin hands it off to Naslin, breaking for the net. Naslin couldn't find room to go in for a shot at Hextall. He has the puck again, though, centered it. Hextall gloved it, looked up. There was Stoogland, so he held on. One thing you can catch Mark Howe on every once in a while is beating him to the outside. And Naslin, who beats a lot of defensemen to the outside, was a half a step away of dancing right in on Hextall. Long time since I've covered a playoff series where the goaltender has dominated the conversation the way Hextall has in this one. It's really something. I'll tell you one thing. If I was in one of those big pools somewhere across Canada, I'd take Hextall. He's got a chance of getting some points compared <laughs> to some guys out there. That ritual of his each time there's a face off in his zone hitting the goalpost. Crossbar. I wonder if that net doesn't come off the magnets the way he rips out. Here's Swoboda. That's a tricky shot. It got through Sutter. And Hextall was in the right spot to stop it. A little floater went right through everybody. Now the Canadians make B. But Bobby Smith. They don't get anything going. Bobby Smith going in there. Trying to pick it up. Near the line. Robinson flipped the pass in. But Marsh dumped it out again. And at center ice, Robinson missed it. Derek Smith moved it in on the left side. And Swoboda takes it. Swoboda skates in front of the net to the right side. Canadians get it up to Naslin, coming in there. Naslin rolled it in front, and it's cleared and out. And that net is off the magnet. And it's been that way for about a minute. And Hextall knew it. And as he saw the Montreal team coming down across center into the Philly zone, he tried to give it a nudge. But by then, the metal had frozen slightly to the ice behind the <laughs> magnet, and it didn't move. And you know, Hextall, he might, if, if he gets caught moving it and the referee thinks he knocked it off, he gets a penalty. Here's where it comes off here. Watch Hextall here. He doesn't care whether the guy goes in on his own or his own defense and pushes him in. He's gonna give the guy a little swat before he leaves the crease. Now, just as they get ready for this face-off, he just might do his little ritual. Here he goes. Something else. Can't beat success. He has been successful. Rookie goaltender for Philadelphia. But he's trailing. Along with his mates, two to one at the eight minute mark of the second period. In this one, here's Mellonby coming up there for Philadelphia. He dropped it to Zazel. Zezel going after it, and the Canadians tie it up and clear it outside the line. Parson can't stop Mameso, but he poked the puck away, and it got back. Now Zezel feeds it in. Parson going in, hit the side of the goal post on the outside, and it bounced into the corner. Flyers up pressing again. Samuelson, that's stopped by Hayward. Mameso the other way with Parson. Dropped it to the left wing. Ludwig diving, trying to knock it into the corner. Mameso went in there, hitting big Samuelson. Carson for Philadelphia. His pass going all the way down the ice. And Kordick is back. Look out! He hit Hayward with it. He turned, 
and fired the puck, hoping to get it out, and Hayward wasn't even watching, and it nearly went in, and it's almost, well, what, a I'm, year ago? I'm not gonna mention it, but we know what, anyone who's a hockey fan knows what we're talking about. We'll leave that alone. Well, I'll tell you, Kordick had a, just a, he'll forget that shift as quickly as he can. Before this happened, he made a very bad pass across from one corner out toward the front of his net. The Flyers almost cashed in. And right there, Kordick and Hayward got involved. Well, after Robinson's high stick and then Kordick's pass, I think if you ask this guy who was bothering him the most tonight, he'd say, my own players are. What is going on is what Brian Hayward is saying. He turned, looked out, and felt it hit him. And then he hoped, and the Canadians got away with it. Just missed the corner. Two to one, Montreal. Canadians starting out, up through center ice. They get it in there. Pass to Carboneau, and he was checked. Island tried to feed it into him. Ganey taken out of the play along the boards. But Kremen coming out for Philadelphia. Eklund moving up on the puck. Eklund coming in, sharp angle. Centered it, though. Puck had knocked it back too far. Cut by Howe down the ice. As they near the halfway mark of the second period. How to talk it work. Prop coming in. Prop gets set, rifled it, and it's deflected high, and it goes into the crowd down behind Hayward. 10.28 left in the second period, two to one Canadians. Who sets the specifications for the engine oil for your GM car or truck? GM does. So when GM brings you an oil with a GM name on it, you can be sure it's the right oil for your GM vehicle. And to filter an oil this good, nothing but the right oil filter for the job. The high-spec, genuine GM replacement AC filter. They were engineered for each other. GM engine oil, AC filters. We got it. Parts to go at your GM dealer or installed in our service department. If the Montreal Canadiens can hold the lead, it would necessitate a sixth game, and game six, if necessary, in the Wales final goes Philadelphia at Montreal from Montreal at 7.30 Thursday. Not sure if Canadians can hold this 2-1 lead the way the Philadelphia Flyers have been coming on in the second period. Boy, they've had some pretty good chances. It's always a tough line to draw in defending a lead, especially one that they, Montreal got so early in the game. They have to have a little offense. You can't sit back and kill off 40 minutes. At least I don't think you can. The Flyers can win this hockey game tonight. They'll go on to the Stanley Cup Final. against either Edmonton or Detroit. Crossman at his own blue line. Marsh, the other defenseman. Flyers on the move again, and they shoot it in. Here comes Brown. He's bumped by Robinson. They hold it on the boards. Two skates locked. Brown got it loose, though. Rolled it back of the net. Here's a centering pass. Jumped over Brown's stick. And the Canadians, Lemieux out. Lemieux fired it in. Ryan Walter going up after it. Crossman makes sure he can't get to it. Now Hextall slapped the pass up to Brown. Brown gets to center. Coming in across the line, Brown waits for the return. It doesn't come. And the Canadians, Lemieux out again. In with Walter, shoots. Love save, Hextall. He clears it. Nice play. Set on the two on one. Sutter in front. And the shot is blocked. Carson electing to shoot. He had Sutter in front of the net. Canadians relieve the pressure for the moment. Clearing it out. What a pass by Hextall. That was setting up a two-on-one. Strudlin bumped off the puck by Mellonby. It's knocked him behind. The Canadians net. Hayward out of the goal. He was slow moving it. Flyers forechecking. There's Mellonby knocking it down in front. And Hayward got his glove down on it. And he holds on, but the Flyers keep coming. It's still two to one, Montreal. Gillette is changing the face of shaving with Atra. First, we made it closer with a pivoting head. Now there's Atra Plus to make it smoother. The advanced lubricants in a unique white Lubra Smooth Strip are released to deliver Gillette's closest, most comfortable shave ever. Face it, nothing comes closer to your kind of shave. Atra Plus from Gillette, the essence of shaving. 
at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. I'm Bob Cole with Dick Irvin, Harry Neal, in the broadcast booth, and Ron McLean and Don Shuri. Along with us for Game 5, 9.05 left in the second period, and the Canadians trying to extend the series to get another game back at the Forum. Two nights from now, they're leading 2-1, to one, but Philadelphia is coming on. Here's Tockett getting loose from the faceoff, centered it, and it's not out across the line and down for McCrimmon. McCrimmon had trouble against McPhee and Naslin. Naslin moving up there. Flyers sent four players to center. McCrimmon threw it in to prop. He shot a low shot, a bullet, and it didn't miss by much. Now McPhee steers a pass to Naslin. Naslin into Scrutland, cutting for the net. He's in. Takes a low shot, and Hextall covers it with the save, and he hangs on. Nice play by Brad McCrimmon, who lost a, a half a step on Scrudland, but knocked him off stride. And Brian Prop scored one from 60-some-odd feet in Montreal in game four. Scared a Hayward a little, I think, with that shot from 60 feet. Brian Prop and Brad McCrimmon are bringing back memories for those of us long, around long enough to remember. They're wearing brush cuts. You right. don't see that. Is this, are they doing it because of the playoffs or what? This is the new buzz. Is that what it's called? See, you younger fellas know all this. Uh, I can't go. keep up with all of this stuff. <laughs> it's a refreshing sign, perhaps, to see very little hair beneath your helmet in the National League these days. Maybe it's the Brandon Jr. Alumni Club who's got the rule. There's a few of them out here, including Hextall. And now, guys, we'll get off that one. 8.34 left in the period. 2-1, to one, Canadians. Well, the Canadians have been fortunate to hang on to that one goal lead here in this period. Here's Chelios trying a long shot. Rebound is there, and it's off his stick and just wide. Canadians press a bit now. They have been in there very much in this period. Mostly it's been Philadelphia testing Hayward and the Canadians at the other end. Now the Flyers dump it down the ice, and Chelios is coming back. He'll touch it, and icing is called against Philadelphia. And the reason... The reason Hextall had so much trouble with Chelios' shot was that it was a flutter ball. And uh, he fought that one a little bit. Usually he just grabs those like they're nothing, but the puck was, watch it now. It's coming like a knuckleball, you see, and can't quite handle it. He's one of those catcher smiths that quite Wilhelm's catcher used to use. You get your hand anywhere near it, it's in it. Bob Euchre says when you catch a knuckle bar, you get to be on a first name basis with the folks sitting in the front row behind a whole plate. See, the goaltenders would have stood up for each other there, just like Hextall did for Patrick Hawa the other night after the long shot by Prop. Chelios, who played 10 minutes and two seconds in the first period, going to see lots of action in this game for Montreal when they only dress five defense. Eric Smith losing it. Canadians, Amesso, couldn't get a good shot. Derek Smith played it off the boards down the ice. Icing waved off this time. Swoboda is back. Sinisalo is in there in a hurry. And Momesso is coming out for Montreal. A rink-wide pass. And Darlene just rolled it in for Corson. Corson given a ride by Derek Smith, who was back with him all the way. Now Marsh comes back to help out. Puck comes loose along the boards to Chelios. Ahead to Corson. Corson, not much room in there. He's knocked down. Darlene back to Chelios, who shot. Deflected off the net, and Marsh decides to go the other way. Marsh, fine defenseman for Philadelphia, leading the attack now across center. He's up over the line and has to dump it in as he wants to get to the bench. Tukey is knocked down. Darlene plays it off the boards, and he got it out. But Kremen wraps it back in for the Flyers. There goes Mellenby after it in the corner. He's tied up, can't make a play. And it's Corson against Carson of Philadelphia. Corson won it. Played it to the other side, but Sutter moved in for Philadelphia. Pressure again by the Flyers. Mellenby got it in to Sutter. He comes in front, shoots. That hit a stick in front of the net, and the Canadians get it out again. Up to center is Bob Ganey. He's coming in there with Darlene. Ganey to Darlene, a good play. Here's Ludwig moving in, and here's Robinson right in. Centered, they score! Beautiful play by Larry Robinson. He might have had the shot himself, 
but he saw the man open, and the Canadians lead now 3-1. to one. Two defensemen <laughs> in on the play like that. Harry Neal is laughing. There was a very good heads-up play, two of them, Ganey, but actually Darlene, I thought, Harry. He waited, and he saw Robinson coming off the bench, and that's when he picked it up. Look at the move by the defenseman to the defenseman. A great move by Larry Robinson, who I'm sure had Hextall fooled. Now watch Robinson. He gets Hextall 20 feet out of the net. And Larry Robinson fakes the shot. That holds Hextall. And Ludwig, who started the rush, stayed in there long enough to tip it in. And you don't see him tip too many in, do you? That's not only his second goal of this playoff here. It's his second goal ever in the Stanley Cup playoffs. He got his first in the Boston series. Canadians are moving up there again. Flipped into the corner, and here's Carboneau going after it. Carboneau gives it to Naslin on the other side. To Carboneau again up the side of the net. He's centered. They score! Carboneau centered it, and Nyland was there. It either hit him or took it and got in. And all of a sudden, the Canadians have a three-goal lead. No chance for Hextall. I wondered if it got to Chris Nyland. He was being covered, and we'll have to check it on the replay. His Carboneau shot came from a very sharp angle. And you can see Marsh is stuck between two players, it, and it hit Tockett and went in. But Marsh got stuck playing a two-on-one, and he played it pretty smartly. He played between the two, and he hoped he'd get some help from behind him. And as help was coming, the puck hit the help's skate and went in, and Nyland never did touch it. Just 19 seconds after Ludwig's goal, the Canadians get another one. And lead now 4-1. to one. Eklund has to move up for Philadelphia. We'll give you the two official scoring plays in just a moment. Flyers want to get one back in a hurry. Only 5.50 left in the period. And the Canadians suddenly have what looks like a commanding lead. Three goals. This is the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. days of the best racing in the world is coming back to Toronto. The Molson Indy, all brought to you by Molson, brewers of export. Here's the goal. You can see Marsh. He had Nyland, then he had to leave Nyland. Talk at 22 comes in. He's going to take Nyland out. I don't think he even saw it hit him in the foot. So the two scoring plays, 13-29, Ludwig, and this one at 13-48. Carboneau from Robinson and Naslin. Robinson and Darlene assisted on Ludwig's goal at 13-29. 41 is the score now. Montreal. Philadelphia pressing for greater part of what we've played at this period. They're in there again. Here's Bellaby getting set. Scores! Bellaby with a dandy shot to the far side. And the Flyers get one of them back. A big, big goal for Philadelphia. This place was as quiet as a churchyard at midnight. But suddenly, here they go again. It's a great shot by Mellonby here. He didn't have much to see. And you can, you're going to get a look at it. It's a two-on-one, not quite a whole two-on-one. A nice pass here. Melody has to kick it up. And you can see the angle was cut down, and he put it just inside the goal post, nice and low, to get Philadelphia back in the hockey game. Now Scott Bellamy gets his second goal in as many games. Makes the score 4-2. to two. Bob, you said it... Uh, See, seemed as though the Canadians have a commanding three-goal lead a couple of minutes ago. Well, okay. it's down to two very quickly on that goal by Scott Mellonby at 14.36. Carson and Sutter. And here come the Flyers again. This has been a pretty good line for Philadelphia. Mellonby has lost the helmet. He's battling with Robinson in there, and Sutter comes in to help his teammate. Mellonby still working on the board. Makes a play in front of the net. It gets back to the line, but out over. Samuelson couldn't hang on to it. Less than five minutes to play, and Bobby Smith in with Ryan Walter dropped it back a shot. That low shot just off the net. And Mellaby shoots it down the ice. 
And Hayward is going to play it. 440 left in the period. The Canadians, just seconds ago, were up four to one. And it looked huge. Now the Flyers, who have been alive in this period, as we have been saying, they get a goal and they come to life again. Here they are. Zazel with Sinisalo. Zazel stopped trying to split the defense. And down it goes. Next all leaves it for Crossman. Crossman through the middle. It goes to spray down the ice. Mellonby's goal was at 1436 from Carson and Sutter. And it makes it 4-2 to for the Montreal Canadiens. Kelly, I'm John. Come on, let's see what you can do. At 3M, we understand Olympic dreams don't happen alone. They need coaches. Careful. When you buy official 3M or Scotch brand products, 3M will make a contribution to Olympic coaching and help make the dream a reality. So, how did it go? We did great. 3M, supporting the dream. Well, there's 20-year-old Scott Bellamy who came to the NHL by Henry Carr High School in Toronto and the University of Wisconsin. The two on one, as Harry pointed out, the good shot. Hayward totally lost his position and balance, really. He never did get it as he went from one side to the other. And Bellamy celebrates the goal that cuts the lead to 4-2. Four 4-13 to four remaining in the period. Strudlin in there against... Dazzle of Philadelphia. McCrimmon takes it away. Flyers don't get it out on the first turn. McPhee slapped it in. Now Derek Smith plays it out to the center ice area and Ludwig hammers it back in. Four minutes left in the period. Philadelphia want to get pressing again. They'd love to get a little closer to the Canadians before this one is out. 3.50 left. Well, this is a big three minutes and 50 seconds for Montreal. It would obviously be in their best interest to get out of this period with at least a two-goal lead. So they can regroup because Philly were inspired by that quick goal that put them right back in the game. Well, Ludwig got a goal at 13.29, and up to that point, Philadelphia had been pressing the Canadians. And then, at 13.48, it's 19 seconds later, Carboneau made it 4-1. to one. And it looked like the roof had caved in here at the Spectrum on their flyers. But then Mellonby with that shot inside the post at 14.36, beating Hayward. And the flyers are back in it. Robinson along the boards. Messo shoots it to the corner, and it goes around the net. Up the other side, Prop gets it to the center ice zone. Canadians, Rick Green has to back up. Forced back a little too far, and then he had to hook a high one. He got a too high over the glass. Well, that was a little unfortunate for Green. The puck was bouncing and wouldn't sit down for him. So he didn't get control of it until the forechecker was right in front of him. And trying to put it off the glass, he put it over the glass. And here's a guy with a souvenir, and he didn't get hit with one that was traveling like a lot of fans do in a hockey arena. 3.34 remaining in the period. Montreal all with a two-goal lead, and they line up now to the right of Brian Hayward. There's Eklund, who has been holding a hot hand for Philadelphia going in to take the draw. Now they want to chat a little more. Mike Keenan sent Brad McCrimmon over to say something to referee Dave Newell. And of course, Larry Robinson wanted to hear what he was talking about, so he came over. But they didn't get a very long conversation with Newell. Rick Green. Hawkins was in there, couldn't knock it down. The Canadians dump it out. They'll try it out to protect that two-goal lead in this second period. Three minutes, 20 seconds remaining as Mark Howe starts the Flyers on their way. Eklund stopped near center, got it again to Mark Howe. Howe coming in, Tockett and Prop going for the net. Howe shoots it. Two Canadian players standing in front of him, and Green, one of them, turns to get in around the net. Prop was in for checking. Ganey was given a bump on the board by McCrimmon. Eklund has lots of time to wind up. Throws it out to McCrimmon, then to Tockett, who shoots one to the Canadians' line. Flyers in after it, but the Canadians just dump it out. They're all back there now. Howe shoots one in. Hayward got a piece of it. Robinson 
Stalls in the corner. He was given a bump. Arbino just rolled it along the board. Steeney couldn't get it out. Cross and played it in front. And Hayward cutting the angle. The Canadians just hanging on now with two and a half minutes left in the period. Ganey is coming up with it. Ganey dropped it up the line. Nyland gets set. Now he's shot. And he had Hextall moving the right way, but he missed the net. It's Marsh coming out. Sutter with him. It's poked away by Chelios. In on the left side. Here's Sutter coming up. Sutter breaks for the net. Takes his shot, a weak one, stopped by Hayward. Here's Mellonby again, got in front, another shot. And he turned and failed to get a backhander away, but he was in close on the first shot. Flyers pressing once again. Coming up in our second intermission this evening, we will relive the 1974-75 Stanley Cups as seen through the mind's eye of then coach Fred Chiro. And Canadians captain Bob Ganey will join us as well. Pat Mellonby is becoming quite an offensive threat here for the Flyers in the playoffs, especially in the last two games. Just missed another goal there. Well, he's getting a lot of ice time, and of course that follows. He's playing awfully well. Eklund had three shots in the first period. Mellonby must have at least three in this period. One of them went in the net. So the Flyers have dominated the period, I feel, Harry, from a territorial standpoint. Shots on goal are still pretty even, although Philadelphia's now gone ahead. They've had the last three. But the Canadians with those two quick ones, it's made it four to two. Well, I asked Mike Keenan if he was happy with Mellonby's play, and he said, yes, he's really improved his intensity. He's really improved his defensive play. We thought he'd score a little more, but maybe that's a year or so away. So they have big plans for this young winger. A minute and 51 seconds left in the period. Montreal leading four to two. We haven't seen Tim Tukey too much tonight. You see him now. Getting ready for this face-off. He played pretty well in Montreal. Well, Montreal's been going with basically three lines, and Keenan's a line matcher, so Philadelphia's been basically countering with three lines. Tukey against Ryan Walter. Walter kicked it loose. Derek Smith moving up after it. Tukey is in there with him. Chelios trying to tie it up on the boards. Four players poking at it, but Chelios doing a pretty good job, killing some time with a minute and a half left in the period. Chelios now controls it. And the Canadians, Corson dumped it off the boards and down the ice. Philadelphia have to go all the way back. Here's Mark Howe. Howe has to race up in his pass. A hurried one, stopped by McPhee. Tukey drops it back. He didn't see the relay to him. Now he does. Turning behind the net. Derek Smith, Tukey in the corner. And the Flyers keep it in. Derek Smith again. Stopped by Swoboda. Swoboda does not give him any room at all. Canadians trying to protect that two-goal lead. And they can't get the puck out of their own zone. It comes back of the net. Swoboda again is tied up by Tukey. Tukey trying to get a pass in front of the goal. 50 seconds left in the period of the Canadians barely hanging on now. They cannot clear it. Gets a chance to move it out. He skates with it. Got as far as center and just rolled it in. 35 seconds remaining in the period. Philadelphia trailing by two. Want to get one back here before the period is out, but no time now. Just 30 seconds left. With Hextall leaving it for Mark Howe. Barely enough time to move down. They're going to do it. Eklund shoots it in. Here comes Tockett up on the play. Bumped in the corner. Eklund has the puck. Throws it behind the net. Tockett gets in front. Robinson trying to get across. But it's Tockett again with Eklund. Finally, Robinson with eight seconds left. Clears the zone, and the Canadians are just hanging on now as the second period comes to a close. And the score at the end of the second period is Montreal four and to Philadelphia, too. I'm Ken Nass from Ken Nass Ford. Now, I'm not suggesting you make a career out of shopping for your next vehicle, but you owe it to yourself to compare. Take the short drive to beautiful downtown Essex, and you'll discover how you can save up to $1,000 on your next purchase. By simply test driving any one of our vehicles, you can win up to $25,000 right on the spot. Try it. 
We'll make it worth your while. I guarantee it. At Kenknap Ford, we're serious about making you the best deal anywhere. Are you planning to build your dream home? Think of your family and decide only the best will do. Outside walls with R48 insulation. That's good. Now make the next move and choose Ducana triple glazed windows with Energy Plus glass. And you will have one of the highest R value windows available on the market today. Ducana quality energy efficient windows and doors are value for you. I'm feeling great out in the sun. I'm ready to move, gonna have some fun. When I get hot, I can go all day. I build up a thirst along the way. I want to taste clear and bright. The lemon lime taste sensational strike. Lime and taste sensational. Sprite. Get a sensation. Sprite. Lime and taste sensation. The third, third time in the past two weeks, the Brick Warehouse will be closed on a business day. The Brick Warehouse closed all day today till 6 tonight. Let me repeat it. The Brick will be closed until the doors open at 6 tonight. They're preparing for the final day, the last six hours of the main event, 1987. That multi-million dollar saving spectacular. It occurs tonight only, from 6 until midnight only. It ends at midnight. Everything's reduced at the Brick Warehouse. You won't believe it. CBC News with Milton Nash. Good evening. Here are some of the stories we're following tonight for the National. Klaus Barbie surprised the court in Lyon today by standing up and saying he was not responsible for killing Jews during the Second World War. He said others were in charge. And Barbie's lawyer accused reporters of convicting his client prematurely. You have all the TV channels, the national TV channels, which are... Uh, showing film, concluding uh, that he is guilty before the trial. South Africa's new ambassador to Canada presented his credentials today. Johannes de Klerk takes over from Glenn Babb. Governor General Jan Sauvé told him Canada will continue to press for the abolition of apartheid. And medical history has been made in Baltimore. For the first time, a heart used in a transplant was taken from a living person. That person got a heart and lungs from an accident victim. More news on the National right after the game in Eastern Canada and at our regular time in the West. At the Spectrum in Philadelphia, as they did in the opening period, the Canadians outscore the Flyers 2-1, and so after 40 minutes of play, it's the Canadians now leading 4-2 and trying to stave off elimination. Obviously, it's a pressure situation, but uh, nothing new to Bob Ganey. Uh, tell me about this game as you see it. Well, it's the, uh, the saying of uh, we have our back against the wall, and it'll be there until... Uh, Either we go out of the series or we can take the series in the seventh game. How much did the series against Quebec prepare you for this situation? Uh, not uh, very much. Uh, the two teams aren't similar in a lot of ways. and uh, 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 Not that it's any disadvantage for us, but when you come out of one series uh, in seven games, it's hard to catch your breath before the next one starts. And we didn't have uh, much time to, uh, to prepare for their team or to get to know their players. And now we're starting to get to know some of the guys whose names are Smith and Sinisalo and some of those players that... Uh, we have to take special care of. I know it's behind you, uh, but uh, tell me about the two games in Montreal and uh, why you view two losses there. Well, uh, I hate to say that it was just bad luck, but I thought we played uh, well in game three, and the Flyers didn't play very well, and uh, they still come out with the, with the win. And in game four, it was the reverse of that, and they still come out with the win. Um, I don't think there's any, uh, any way that you can uh, give uh, an explanation for it other than that... Uh, the momentum was going their way, and uh, they took advantage of it. Well, the first ever Stanley Cup for Bob Ganey among five was against the Philadelphia Flyers, and he'll hope that that luck continues in this game, and the Canadians assuredly have put themselves in a good spot, leading by two at the end of two periods. We'll look at former Flyers coach Freddie Shiro, and we return. The Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC continues in just a moment. Hi. I just moved in next door. Could I borrow a Diet Pepsi? Sure. Yes. Be right with you. Are you okay in there? Here's your Diet Pepsi. Thanks. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. No trouble at all. Diet Pepsi. Make the move to taste. I promised myself by the time I was 30, I'd buy a place away from it all. 
And I said, OK, by 35. Well, it didn't happen. Now, instead of one, there are four of us. But we finally found a person who's going to help us get that place. And this fund can provide you with tax-free capital gains? This doesn't hurt a bit, no. Mutual Life of Canada, because it's time someone made it easier. Nobody knows value better than I do, and nobody delivers better value than Tandy. Like the Tandy 1000 SX, up to one and a half times the speed of ordinary PCs. With exclusive Deskmate software, it's a superb value at just under $2,000. But this month, Tandy makes it a blue chip saving at just $14.99. Too bad Tandy doesn't make one of these. Blue chip savings until May 30th at Tandy Computer Centers and selected Radio Shack stores. A new romance is too much for Matt. I think I'm in shock. What do you mean? It's a grandfather. Airwaves, Monday on CBC Television. The Philadelphia Flyers won their Stanley Cups in 1974 and 75. Their head coach was the philosopher Fred Shiro. Here are some reflections of Shiro's heroes as seen by the head coach himself. I told him to beat the Bruins and to beat Bobby Orr, possibly the greatest player that ever lived. We must concentrate on him. We must give him the puck all night long, unless we have a three and two or two and one going. And they thought I was crazy. But I said, believe in me, we will give him the puck and give him the puck and make him pass it. We'll get in his way. We'll tire him out. When the third period rolls around, he'll have nothing left. And that's exactly what happened. 17 men, I said, must be better than one. I knew right away when I coached the Flyers, I had a team that loved to fight. So I let them fight. And uh, I liked our system where you hit after pass or shot and we create more hits. As a result, you have more fights. Bobby Clark is the uh, greatest competitor I've ever seen in any professional sport. He was the greatest leader I've ever seen in any, in any professional sport. He was actually a dream dressed in work clothes. And uh, without him, uh, we, we wouldn't be competitive. In fact, without him, we never would have made the playoffs. That's the way I look at it. The turning point in the whole series was, was in the second game. We had to win that game to stay alive. And I thought, if we won it, we'll win it. Finally, when the overtime started, face off in their corner, I turned to the fans. I couldn't take it anymore. I said, Schultz, get out there. And I turned to the fans. I said, you got Schultz. Schultz rushed into the corner, took out two players bodily, got the puck, passed it to Clark, and the puck is in the net. And the series, you might say, is over. And I still remember in that uh, final game against Boston, I wrote on the blackboard, I said, we will win together. I said, we will win together tonight, and we will walk together forever. Bernie Perrant was a hero all year long, and uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, he won the Most Valuable Player Award uh, in the playoffs. He won a brand new car, and immediately after winning the car, he gave it to me for no reason, as far as I know. He said, that belongs to you, not to me. Return to glory with the Philadelphia Flyers of Fred Shiro. Those of Mike Keenan trail by two goals after two periods of play. Our coach Don Cherry is next. Live on CBC, this is Hockey Night in Canada and the Stanley Cup playoffs.
The SO No Trouble Gasoline actually cleans carburetors and fuel injectors as you drive. Now, if some people had a little less trouble believing that, they might have a little less trouble. We've come together. From places near and far. With one goal in mind. Canadian. The spirit takes wing. A simple country boy has simple needs. A house, a car, and the most advanced high-performance tires on the road. Take me where this heart began. Love to ride the same good land that my daddy loved. The Goodyear Eagle VR was developed out of a Formula One racing tire design, and that's important even if you're just going next door. Good here, take me home. Hit us with your best shot. Come on, hit us with your best shot. Hit us with your best shot. Fire away. The last thing you need is a broken windshield. That's why we'll come to you with our free mobile service backed with a Canada-wide guarantee. Standard Auto Glass. Ludwig and Carbonell for the Canadians in the second period. Mellonby for the Philadelphia Flyers. It's now 4-2 Montreal through two periods of play. Your thoughts on Freddie well, Sherrill? Just a minute. I go to Montreal and you show films of Lafleur beating us in Montreal. I come here, you got this here. What's going on here? Uh, uh, the only one thing I've got to say to Freddie that he was wrong on that is he said possibly Bobby Orr was the greatest ho hockey player. No question at all, he was the greatest hockey player who ever lived. You and he met four times in Stanley Cup playoff competition. What yes, happened? Uh, we beat him out three out of the four. I didn't want to say that. Thank you very much for bringing it out. Uh, Freddie the Fog. Uh, I liked him. I'll tell you why I liked uh, Freddie the Fog was because he was the first guy as a coach to get a hundred grand. And we all, all the coaches loved the guy. In fact, he was one of the guys, the only guy I know that wanted to start a coaches union. Naturally, it never came. But Freddie was really funny. He'd go over to Russia and he'd say, everybody play the Russian system. And then he'd bring in the Broad Street bullies and kill everybody. I just know you like him because you won three or four, but you stick around for this Scotty Bowman feature next week. It's 4 2 Montreal after two periods. The third period's on deck. Hockey Night in Canada returns in just a moment. Woolco celebrates their 25th anniversary with Rochelle. Rochelle goes everywhere in style. Always on time, always making a good impression. Ah, Rochelle. Fine quartz watches for men and women, guaranteed by Wilco. And now this exclusive collection is half price. Beautiful Rochelle. Fine quartz watches only at Wilco. Make way for the new generation of pickups. Make way! Make way! All new Dodge Dakota, North America's first mid-size pickup. Dakota handles like a small pickup. Room for three inside and full-size payload capacity. Plus, the pulling power and performance of a V6 engine. Mid-size Dakota, the only four-wheel drive with Dodge's Ram top warranty protection. Make way for Dodge Dakota! Make way! Dodge, the official trucks of the NHL. Hello, cat. Want to scratch a lucky match and be an instant lottery winner? Lucky match gives you nine lives, hmm? Scratch and match any three to win one of the millions of instant prizes, up to $50,000. Wow! Lucky match, the newest instant lottery game. Smart cat, that. Did we win a game, sir? Lucky match, the new instant game.
The Canadians lead the Philadelphia Flyers 4-2, and here's why. Ludwig and Carbono scoring 19 seconds apart. And then Scott Mellenby got one back for Philadelphia at 14.36. The shots in the period, as you see, Philadelphia out shooting the Canadians 13-9, and they certainly held the ter territorial advantage. Philadelphia, as I mentioned earlier, think they're a third period team, and the stats have proved that they are most of the time. Watch for Hextall's long pass from his zone to try and spring a four on three for Philadelphia, or when Montreal's changing on the fly, the Philadelphia right winger will stay out a little longer. That's across the ice from the Montreal bench, and maybe Hextall can get him the puck for a bit of a breakaway. I know Keenan likes him to be involved in come from behind situations offensively. So let's watch for it. Philadelphia sending on target with Eklund and Prop to start this third period. Corson for Montreal at center ice. Lamesso is on the right side. B on the left. And the Flyers shoot it in. You know Mike Keenan has pleaded with them to get one early if possible. Well, they're in there. Green dropping Tonka to the ice. He was in front of the Canadian's net. Here's Tonka again coming in with Prop. He sent her to Prop. And they just missed getting an early goal right there. Canadians get it out. Arkow now in front of his own net. It's tipped through center. Canadians were coasting in the second period. And were really fortunate to come out of it with a two-goal lead. Now they're in there again. Here's McPhee's shot, hit the crossbar. A bullet shot had the goaltender Hextall beaten cleanly. But it rattled off the crossbar. McPhee now trying to center it. Lamesso there trying to get it out. Philadelphia clearing it up to prop. Was talking in, it's cleared in. Right to Hayward. He knocked it down. For Robinson, minute gone in the period. Already we've had a, a pair of fairly good scoring chances. One at either end. Now Nyland is coming in to try it. Nyland gets in the slot, dropped it back to the blue line, kept on side. Fans with a view of that line didn't think so, but the play continues. Marsh can't get it out. Not on the first try. Now he loses it. Canadians in. It's dropped to Carbono. Carbono goes through the line. The Swoboda shot. Rebound. And the backhander just misses. There's Ganey in bumping with Carbono. Nyland got in front. Nyland again. And he lost it to Derek Smith. Smith rolled it up to Sinisalo. Here's Zezel leaving it up the blue line. They're outside at the Montreal line. From the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. There's no doubt about it. You have it made. At Mo Campbell, Lincoln Mercury, Mayor Corps. This is Mo Campbell. There's no doubt about it. Don't tie up your money if you're not ready to buy you can lease for less. We have individual and fleet leasing, the plan that's right for you. Lease from us, any make, any model, you'll have it made. There's no doubt about it. You can be what you want to be at Mo Campbell Lincoln Mercury, 250 to buy. You can lease for less. We have individual and fleet leasing, the plan that's right for you. Lease from us, any make, any model, you'll have it made. There's no doubt about it. You can be what you want to be at Mo Campbell Lincoln Mercury, 250 Tecumseh Road East, across from Jackson Park. Here's Ryan Walter playing one into the Philadelphia zone. Hextall stopping it behind the net and leaving it there. Lead pass for Carson. Carson shoots it in and right to the net minor, and Hayward loved it. Threw it off to one side. Lemieux rolled it ahead to Bobby Smith. Left wing pass to Ludwig, who has been moving up a lot tonight from his defense spot. Samuelson, Sutter with Carson and Mellenby on there for Philadelphia. Canadians trying to clear the zone. Bobby Smith bumped by Sutter. And then Lemieux lost a chance to clear. Here's Mellenby with a shot. That's blocked in front by Ludwig. Mellenby fell. And the Canadians get it out of the zone. But again, you get the feeling that the Flyers are coming on with more effort. And the Canadians are doing a lot of coasting inside their own blue line. Tocket, cross center. 
Knocked it down with his hand by Ludwig and coming in after Chelios. Chelios to Nasland. He gets it across the line to Strudlin. His pass through the middle. McPhee trying to work in. Weak shot. That's stopped easily by Hextall. And the Flyers come out again. How to the blue line. A rink-wide pass. Choked off at center ice. Strudlin went after it. After McPhee knocked it down. Here's Naslin getting the pass near center. Naslin nearly gave it away to Tocket, who was up for checking and watching him. Now Naslin failed to pick it up. Eklund coming in. Eklund gets loose, but offside is called back at the Montreal blue line. Four to two, the Canadians leading. 328 gone in the third. Fill your brush with the color of life. Mastercraft Premier, Canadian Tire's most durable paint in hundreds of vivid colors, painstakingly copied from the original, only at Canadian Tire. A few minutes ago, Canadian's left winger Mike McVeigh might have given us the loudest crossbar of the playoffs. What a chance he had. Textile beaten on the play, and this thing rang throughout the spectrum when it hit the post in behind the Philadelphia goaltender. Sounded like the bells of St. Mary. Canadians, four, Flyers, two. Canadians trying to send the series to a sixth game. If they do, Hockey Night in Canada will be on the air with it from coast to coast. Next all out of the net, 30 feet. He cleared it by two Canadians. Drop back. That game in Montreal, should there be one at 7.30 Eastern time. At the point, but here's Howe centering it right in front. Oh, what a save by Hayward. Three passes, and Brown had a good chance there for Philadelphia. But Hayward made a terrific save. Robinson and Green. Bring it up to center, rink wide pass, gets through and into Hextall. Nearing the five minute mark of the third. Stadium still leading by two goals. Suki couldn't move it outside the line. Canadians on it. Strudlin fired into the corner, and McCrimmon will go back there. Montreal making changes. McCrimmon starts at the Brown. Now to Hill. Hill near center. Couldn't handle the pass. Swoboda for Canadians. Up to center. Nasdaq coming in. Long shot. Knocked down, but right to Strudlin. The backhander stopped. McPhee back of the net. McPhee tried to leave it in the corner. Now he one hands it along the board. Scrutlin in the corner and Marsh all over him. Now Scrutlin gets up. Can't center it. The goaltender Hextall stopped that pass out. Derek Smith turns, wheels away. Smith, a rink wide pass, went in behind Swoboda. Swoboda right in front of his own net. Now tosses it back of the goal. Nearing the six minute mark of the third. Still four to two, Montreal. Canadians dumping one in and they're definitely playing the defensive type game right now. They're making changes on the fly as Crossman starts the attack. Across center. Shoots one in on the glass. Hayward will come out. Takes a good look around. Sees Gainey over there. And he was nailed by Derek Smith. There's Smith. Weak shot. Missing the net. Smith was hit in front of the goal by Gainey. Who returned the favor. There's Gainey taking the pass. Skating down the left boards and across the line on McCrimmon. Shot stopped by Hextall. This one will go out of the play in over the glass. 4-2, Montreal leading. Introduces a tougher, meaner animal. full size with heavier backbone. Standard rear-wheel anti-lock brake system. The highest standard power in its class. A tougher hide of galvanized steel. The 1988 Chevy full-size pickup. A tougher, meaner animal. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. They've got a face-off coming up to the right of Ron Hextall. And Bobby Smith is in to take it against Sutter. 
flipped a shot in wide of the net. Next goal wants to leave the goal. He did a bit. Lobbed it on the board. Sutter trying to move up on it. Sutter has Mellonby on the right side. But it's the Canadian stealing it. Dropped back in front of the net. Here's Bobby Smith centering it. And a nice save by Hextall. Smith was in a perfect position to let her go. But he threw it off to the left wing. Now Mellonby in his own zone. Turning around. He has scored the second Flyers goal to get him a little bit closer. Carson for Philadelphia. Got it out of the zone up to center ice. Ludwig dumps it back in. Too high into the crowd. Well, Ron Hextall just made a super save off Craig Ludwig. And so Lud the Canadians have had their chances, Harry, to get that three goal lead back. Ludwig made a nice play, kept it on the ice to the far side. And as Hextall was moving to his right, the shot went back to his left, but he managed to keep his left foot on the ice and made a stop on Ludwig, who's becoming quite an offensive <laughs> star tonight, by the way. You know, that line that was out there with. Mellonby, Sutter, and Carson. Until that shift, they've been the best line for Philadelphia, but they had a poor shift there, and Keenan got them off quickly. Howe slides it back to McGrimmon. Jumps one high. He's on there, though, this time, and Prop rolled it ahead on the right wing. Talking was covered. Eklund couldn't pick it up, and the Canadians bring it in. Swoboda centered it. Mark Howe covering Carboneau. Mark Howe trying to skate away from Carboneau. That's not an easy chore. Nyland is alone! And he rifled it wide. He was in alone and took the shot from 25 feet and missed the net. Hextall now out. Long pass by Hextall. Swoboda near center and drops back. Robinson shoots it through the middle and the Flyers are on that one. Here's Eklund centering it. Tockett coming up against Swoboda. Swoboda covered him well. And Carboneau will dump a high one out. As they near the eight-minute mark, he's onside. Mavesto took the shot, and Hextall, cutting the angle, made the save. Here's Eklund going in with Prop and Sinistalo. Eklund handles the puck right in front, and Marsh caught up on the play. Three Canadians come out of the zone, but that long pass to Robinson was too far. Robinson was careful not to move on. Want to get trapped. Zazzle turning with Marsh. And here's Derek Smith grabbing the pass on the backhand and shooting it in. They've played eight minutes now of the third. It's still 4-2 to two, Montreal. Marsh back. Morrison watching him. Morrison chasing Crossman, but Dezel gets the pass and goes in. Set up Smith, and he fell. Couldn't get a shot. Dezel after it now. Dezel pinned on the boards by Corson of the Canadians. Marsh at the blue line tried a shot. And it's Chelios coming out. Chelios slides it ahead. And the Canadians move it up across the line. Feet try to get loose. And the Flyers shoot it down the ice. Well, the Philadelphia fans are quite upset with what the Flyers are doing. And I think that they're still in the game, but about 16 of the 17,000 don't agree with me. The Stanley Cup playoffs return in a moment. Smooth, Jack. Very smooth. You think that's smooth? Now I'll have a smooth Molson Gold. How did you do that? Simple. It's a twist top. <laughs> Cold Age Molson Gold. About as smooth as it gets. This replay board called the Arena Vision Board here in the Spectrum which is a recent addition to the rink, cost $2 million, and that's exactly what the Flyer franchise cost in 1967. Well, that's the question. For you. Among other things, Prop with McGrennan. Prop moving up, and Green back. Scrudlin for Canadians, lost it. Eklund nearly had a chance for a shot. Now he misses throwing it in behind the net, and the Canadians get it up to center ice. Eklund turning there. Canadians in possession again. Naslin lost it. Here's Mark Howe coming in. Shoot! And stopped by Hayward. He just cut the angle as Green was there watching Howe and 
keeping him on the outside. Mark Howe, his father is in the Hockey Hall of Fame, but before you think that that just follows, my father's in the Hockey Hall of Fame. I am living proof that athletic ability is not hereditary, despite Mark and Gordy. Well, Mark may find a booth in the Hockey Hall of Fame somewhere down the line, and Montreal ought to be worried about number two pinching in from the blue line, joining some rushes, and moving in from the blue line into the slot for some plays. He can become a real offensive factor, especially when he knows his team has 10 minutes and 50 seconds to get two goals. But in the first nine minutes and 10 seconds of this period, they've had only two shots. Hextall has made three huge saves to keep the Flyers alive in this game. And if they can stay alive in this game and uh, tie it up and maybe go on and win it, It'll end the season for the Canadians. But the Habs, you know, have other ideas. They want a six game on Thursday back at the Forum in Montreal. And if we do go back there, Hockey Night in Canada will have it for you at a 7.30 start from coast to coast. Four to two. 10.50 left in the third. Chelios takes it in behind the net to Nyland. Nyland starts away. His pass to the middle, and Ganey will dump it in. Canadians being very careful now. They'll have one four checker in there, and that's about it. It'll be Carbono on this move. Luck comes out. Derek Smith. He was stopped near center ice by Ganey. Carbono moving up on Zezel. Zezel fell. Carbono couldn't move in on the puck, though. Now Crossman tries to get away from Carbono and Ganey. Gets to the center, and Chelio slaps it back in. Textall stopping it. Mark comes out. Lead pass for Brown at center. Brown's long shot in wide of the net. Derek Smith coming up after it for Philadelphia. Zessel digging it out. A good worker, this Zessel. But now he falls on this play. Crossman kept it in. Three Canadians in position in front of the net, though, and Bobby Smith is away. Smith going in. Great move, Smith. Shoots, hit the goal post, rebound. <laughs> and Mark's cut back in the net to save the day for Philadelphia. They go the other way now. Carson going in with Sutter. And Hayward stopped the shot. Philadelphia pressing now after that break at the other end. Here's Mellonby behind the net with Sutter centering it. And Hayward makes a big save with Mellonby and Sutter standing right there. What a play by Brad Marsh at the Philadelphia end to take a sure goal away from the Canadians, which I'm sure would have cinched this game. And this guy took one right in the middle of that P on his shirt when Hextall was long gone out of the net. Smith takes him out of the net with this move. Now watch what happens here. Off the post, out to Lemieux, off March. Well, you know, you almost had that situation. Miss at one end, get it at the other because the Flyers went right up the ice and came this close to making it four to three. All that happened within about 10 seconds, and a goal for e either one of those teams would have changed the complexion of this game completely. I guess, Bob, Philadelphia is learning what all you Newfoundlanders know. You can get that hooked fish to the boat, but getting it in the boat isn't easy. Bob. Do we all know that? Well, you tell me. It's the fishing paradise of North America. There's no question about that. 9.30 to play here at the Spectrum. There's Ryan Walter against Sutter. Sutter, Mellonby, and Carson. This has been a very effective line for Philadelphia. Three hard workers. They don't drop it in yet. A little anxious. The other linesman back at the blue line spotted somebody out of position. Sutter again ready. Wins the draw. Gets it in front of the net. The Canadians try to clear the zone now as often as they can. It rolls right down wide to the Philadelphia goal. And they call that icing, and they'll bring it back. I'd like to get in a word here. We are in the Stanley Cup playoffs, but there's another big hockey-type tournament coming up in Toronto from the 3rd to the 6th of June. That's the Canadian Special Olympics 1987 International Floor Hockey Tournament with 25 teams competing for the little Stanley Cup. And I tell you, do they compete. The tournament will be opened by the first ever Ontario Police Torch Run. Six separate relays of law enforcement personnel from six regions at all ends at the Varsity Arena Wednesday evening, June 3rd. 
So the torch run in the floor hockey tournament for the Special Olympics, certainly deserving of the support of people in the Toronto area and elsewhere. They do a tremendous job for a great cause. Nine minutes, 19 seconds left in the third period. And the Canadians making the two-goal lead stand up so far. Here's Mark Howe's shot. He just missed on the short side. Kremen bats one in back of the goal. It's centered. Green is there watching prop. Now Tarkin tried to center it and did. And Ludwig fired it away to the corner again. Philadelphia pressing, but now the Canadians get it out into the center eye zone. Howe will wait. Scrudlin watching him. Prop coming to center ice where he'll shoot it in. Hayward out. He missed it. It bounced away from him. Green goes the other way, and Prop is in there fast for Philadelphia. Flyers cock it on it to Prop, and he couldn't get a good shot. Now it centers, and the Canadians just hanging on now. Here's Howe's shot. That is blocked by Naslin, and Naslin trying to break away, setting up a two-on-one. Naslin coming in, and it was deflected by McCrimmon. Right the hex call. Now he decides to hold it. He had a notion to shoot it away himself from his kneeling position, but he held it. Spectrum in Philadelphia with Dick Irvin and Harry Neal in the booth. Ron McLean and Don Cherry on our crew for game five. Here tonight with 825 left in the period. Period three. The Canadians are leading by two. Four to two. And they're playing that defensive type hockey game. These Canadians are. Flyers keep coming out, coming out, but the Canadians are all back a little more now. They're trying not to get caught. Let's see what happens as Smith starts away. He's passed to center, and that's up across center ice. He can't get his stick on a doll. He's checked on the boards. They call the play, and the officials get in there in a hurry. It's been a kind of an orderly type hockey game, though. The whole series has. Uh, we haven't had nearly the spark fireworks that you usually get in series between two physical teams but Zezel did not like the massage the wood massage that Darlene was giving it was corset not Dolly giving it to him <laughs> I didn't think it'd be Darlene but <laughs> whoever it was this guy didn't like it he's a real strong addition to the Philadelphia lineup he Smith and Tockett all making it in the same year when they weren't high draft picks. And if you'd looked at the Philadelphia Flyer Media Guide, they were in that section that said, in the system. Now they are the system. Speaking of the Flyer Media Guide, we mentioned the other night that Kelly Eklund was once Athlete of the Year in Sweden because that's what it says in the Media Guide. Matt Naslin says, not so. He says, a hockey player has never been Athlete of the Year in Sweden. He says, it's either a skier, a tennis player, or a wrestler. <laughs> I, think, I thought Patrick Sunson was the athlete of the yeah. year there once, yeah. too. Matt says a hockey player has never won it. Told me that last night. We'll check further for the story. 7.55 remaining. Third period. Canadians hanging on to the two-goal lead. Asland on the board, trying to poke it in, and he did. But Bremen starts out. Right wing pass. That goes down the ice, and here's Sutter with Carson catching up. But Chelios played it well. Naslin comes back to help Chelios. Sutter fighting for it on the boards. He falls. He can't come up with it. Yes, he does. And they do get it in front. Out to center, three Canadians. They just slow up. Trying to kill some time. Naslin's bumped on the board by McCrimmon. Carson goes around the net. And starts away for Philadelphia. Carson with Sutter. Carson carries all the way, but he couldn't beat the Canadian defense from Ludwig, who pinned him on the board. Sutter is bumped off the puck. And Carson has been hurt. 
He was hit by Ludwig, and now he obviously has been injured. I'm not sure that he didn't spear himself with his own stick as Ludwig threw him into the boards. But he had Ludwig half beaten. Here's the play now. Watch Carson stick and see if he doesn't just do that. No, he didn't. I was wrong on that one. Sometimes that happens to a forward. You know, he goes in, he's trying to dig the puck out, and he can't get a stick out of the way, and he skewers himself on his own stick, but not that time. Lindsey Carson from North Battleford, Saskatchewan, hometown of Emil Cap Francis. He's been a very good hockey player for the, this team in this series. So Carson needs a few seconds, but he's now getting back up and appears to be okay. New Protec Ultra from Esso. Flows faster when you start your engine for better protection. Because most engine wear occurs during the first two minutes after ignition, right in your driveway. New Protec Ultra, protection for your engine's future. The Canadians led two to one after the first period. Within 19 seconds, it was four to one. Ludwig and Carbono scoring in the second, and then Mellenby got one back for Philadelphia at 14:36. That's been the story of the scoring to this point. With 6:50 left in the third period, four to Montreal. Nyland, a long shot. Drifted one in on the glass. Sinisalo clears the zone for Philadelphia, and Ganey shoots it back in. Hextall waits there as Nyland comes in. To Crossman in the corner, and the Flyers get going. Sutter up to center ice with Derek Smith on his left. Sutter went off balance, and the Canadians, green in front of the net against Sinisalo, had to move it in a hurry. Nyland coming back to help. It's centered. Sinisalo getting away from Swoboda. Sinisalo now tied up by Svoboda, who tried to boot it. And the Canadians just hook a high one all the way down to Marsh. Marsh coming back to center. Eklund moving up. Eklund is stopped at the blue line by Svoboda. And the Canadians get it out. Eklund fighting for it again on the boards. But Montreal, a pass in behind Lemieux with 5.50 left in the third. And the Canadians just trying to choke off any rally the Flyers have ideas on now. Eklund's long shot. Funny hop off the boards back there. Got back in front of the net. Canadians will clear it now. A deep play ahead by Ryan Walter. Now it comes to Lemieux going in. And his backhand had Hextall beating, but he beat, but he just missed the net. He made the right move, and Hextall came with him, but he threw it back too far. And it just went off the outside of the post. Still 4-2 Canadians. The all-new GMC Sierra is hundreds of improvements on everything the full-size pickup has ever been before. The largest new vehicle investment in General Motors history. What can we possibly say about hundreds of improvements? Just this. They're not improvements until you say they are. Test drive the new Sierra soon. Don't forget game six if necessary, and it appears imminent now with just minutes remaining. Philadelphia at Montreal from the Forum in Montreal at 7.30 Thursday. 14.35 gone here in this third period. Flyers having to be catch up hockey, but the Canadians have been the team with the best scoring chances in this period. Philadelphia with just three shots on goal so far. There's Chelios. Lemieux had a chance seconds ago to put the game away. Two goal lead. Not that much with over five minutes left. Philadelphia needing one though very soon if they want to get a chance at tying it. Canadians are making sure that everybody is checked or trying to anyway. Here's Ludwig coming back and Chelios is the first one to hustle in. Mellonby in after him. Chelios gets away from Bellaby and ahead it goes to Babesso who dumped it out. 450 left. Mark Howe got it up to center again, but Chelios is there now, and he shoots it into the Canadians will make quick changes the rest of the way. But Kremen around the net. Kremen coming out, a right wing pass. 
knocked down. Here's Naslin coming in, Scoodlin heading for the net. And that weak shot in right to Hextall. Four and a half minutes left. Hextall now feeding one out to Hill. Hill left it there. Mark poking at it. And the Canadian Scoodlin combined for checking. McPhee went in with Naslin. Naslin rolled it along the boards. There goes McPhee. And Mark Howe takes it away from him. Howe trying to clear it out to Hill. He got it as far as the line. And Naslin made a good move. Now Naslin tried to shoot it in. Fanned on it. Hill lifted a stick. Canadian Robinson off the boards to center ice with 3.50 to play in the third period. Time running out on Philadelphia. Now the Canadian really chucking the Flyers right into the ice. Down it goes. And this one, however, will be icing, so they'll bring it back to the Canadian zone. Well, I'm sure any coach will tell you, and especially Jean Perron tonight, that the harder you work defensively, the better you are offensively. In this period, as you said, Dick, Philly having three shots and Montreal having at least five good scoring opportunities proves that the coach is right. And they are a lot of times. When this Quite game began, the fans here gave the Flyers the loudest and longest standing O I've seen any team accorded this season anywhere in the NHL in my travels. Now, many of those same fans are either leaving or booing. So it's the what have you done for me lately this thing city, all over this again. This city's known for that. Yes. Baseball and football. Ask Buddy Ryan or the great home run hitter Schmidt how the fans have treated them from time to time. It is Sutter. Winning the draw, but the Canadians hop on it quickly, and Nyland is going to clear it out of his own zone. He'll take the center with it. Nyland going in with Carbono and Ganey. Here's Carbono. The low backhander stopped by Hextall. Three and a half minutes remaining in the period. Down it goes. Marsh backhanding it in. Tocket coming up there with Prop. Trying to get his stick on it. There's Prop in the corner. Tockett slapped it wide of the net. Marsh on the other side. A high shot on the glass. Flyers pressing. Goes back of the goal for Tockett again. He centered it. And three Canadians are there to bring it out. Up to center, Carbonell. Long shot, and Hextall stopped that. 2.55 left in the third period. 4-2 Canadians. Here's Mellonby. He got it in across the Montreal blue line. Robinson ahead to Smith. Smith to Lemieux. Lemieux in faking the shot. Now breaking for the net. Lemieux centered it. Hextall down, and he got his left leg down. And all the puck in underneath is pad and just held it there. Well, Hextall was fortunate there because another one of those Montreal pass outs hit a de Philadelphia defenseman and nearly slid past Hextall. Here's the play by Lemieux. He fakes the shot to freeze the defenseman. Then he gets outside him. Can't quite cut in, but watch this. Off McCrimmon's skate and nearly into the net. And it was Mark Howe again that was beaten to the outside. This has been the best game Lemieux has played in this series. Well, Hextall has had to come up big to keep this a 4-2 hockey game here in the third period. 2.39 remaining. Well, they certainly can't blame this fellow for tonight's apparent loss. As you say... I love those goaltenders that make the big saves at the big time of the game, and he has. Two fast goals that way along in the second period. Doing it for Montreal, Ludwig and Carboneau. Ludwig at 13.49 and Carboneau at 13.48. 19 seconds apart. And Bellamy got one back. That's where we stand now. No scoring in this third. Two minutes and 20 seconds left in the third period. And the Flyers shoot it up the center, offside. Sinisalo, if the sixth game is necessary, it'll be back in Montreal, of course, at the Forum. And Hockey Night in Canada will be on the air at 7.30 with that game, coast to coast. Frustrating night for Mike Keenan and the Philadelphia team, and especially frustrating here in the third period. Montreal out shooting them 10 to 3. And Harry would have thought it would have been the other way around. It, it, as Bob was pointing out, in the last five minutes of the second period, it looked like Montreal was just hanging on. But somehow they found a bit of extra gimp in their legs and the Flyers haven't done very much in this third period so far. Well, you can you can generate some defensive momentum too and that's what Montreal's done. Every line's confident that they can do just as well as the line before them defensively and it's worked perfectly this period to date. 
There's Carbon Owen checking back to the Philadelphia net, but I think he's going to get nailed with a penalty. Double penalty to Hank Bob. Carbon Owen Hexgall, if I'm not mistaken. And there's Dave Newell, who's done a nice job tonight. It hasn't been a real tough one to handle, but he hasn't made it a tough one to handle, and that's why he's one of the better referees in the National League. Andy Van Helleman is the backup official in the building tonight, which likely means that he will be working game six in Montreal two nights from now. There's the McCrimmon. It was the McCrimmon, I think, Harry. He and Carboneau bumped together. We'll see it now. Watch Hexgall. He's trying to get in on this. There's the slash by Carboneau. Here's Hexdall. Look at Hexdall. And he wasn't even in the crease. And his big threat was he's going to slash at anybody in his crease. <laughs> that time, the guy he wanted was behind the net. I think he was interested in cutting down a red, white, and blue tree. <laughs> <laughs> Only 2.06 left. This penalty at 17.54. McCrimmon and Carboneau. So coincident, Miners. And the Canadians, Ludwig, can't keep it in. Flip the high one in. Ganey will clear the zone. The clock will run as the play continues with two minutes left. And Howe gets to center. Shoots one into the Canadian zone. Back there, Ludwig, talk it after him. Ganey gets a chance to move it out. Does not move it out. Canadians hustling forward on this side. Chelios gets it as far as the line, and Howe kept it in. Chelios again. And this time it gets out and down the ice. One and a half left in the third period. Prop fell, but he knocked it in across the Canadian line. 125 left, third period. Canadians running out the clock now. Coming out is Ganey. Ganey left it for Corson. He tried to shoot it in. Ganey well. And with 110 left, it's Hextall behind the net. Canadians. Backing up, Hextall looking to the bench. He does not leave. Sutter dropped it. The shot is blocked. Brown went in after it. A minute left. Hextall still in the net. And the Canadians, with a two-goal lead, just get back and cover everybody if they can. Here's a chance for Sutter and his shot off the goal. 45 seconds to play in the third. Flyers go in for checking Sutter without a stick. Trying to kick it back. Waller gets it out. It's a break now for Lemieux alone. He's in. Scores. Lemieux getting the break. A swift skater, and he moved up on it to beat Hextall, and that'll do it. A deck we go to game six. Doesn't that remind you of, of uh, Eklund's goal uh, when he put it away on a clear breakaway a little earlier in the period than this was? 34 seconds left. We mentioned Claude Lemieux a couple of minutes ago. He's had his best game of this series, certainly, and he makes his best play of tonight right here. Sure has played well for Montreal, and he looks, keeps that puck well ahead of him, waits for Hextall to spread out, and then fires it through him. This is the best game Lemieux's played, and he spent less time lying on the ice than any other game of the series. Right through the five hole, and when Lemieux came in, he could see the puck and Hextall's legs at the same time. 1926, the time of that goal, likely the last goal of the game, and it's another 5-2 win for the Canadians. Now only 15 seconds to play. The Flyers uh, shoot it up there, and the Canadians go back. 7.30 start on Thursday night at the Forum in Montreal, and Hockey Night in Canada will be on the air with that game. Flyers in. Off the goalpost. That low shot. And just two seconds left. It's dumped out and down the ice. Lemieux from Walter and Robinson, the last scoring play at 19.26. And we go to game six back at the forum on Thursday night starting at 730 look out we've got a gathering here everybody on the ice Brown jabbing his stick into a group of Canadian players and linesman sweet knock having quite a job on his hands now Harry you mentioned about tonight's hockey game I saw the same thing during one of the Montreal Quebec games it was a good solid hockey game until the final buzzer and then you had this same kind of a scene well, maybe, I don't, the, maybe uh, that rule where the teams have to go directly to the bench, the dressing room at the end of the period, should be extended to the end of the third period as well. It never is. Well, they like to let those players run out and congratulate right. the goaltenders. Dave Newell is saying now, we've had a quiet night. Fellas, please. This one is over. 
Well, it looks like he's got it separated. And I think one thing you can say about the Montreal Canadiens tonight, Hayward did a job in goal. Playing five defensemen, the five guys knew they were going to play a lot, so they played within their ability range, knowing they're all going to play 28 to 35 minutes apiece, and there were no passengers on the Montreal ship this evening. So the Canadians win this one. Game five, five to two. Setting up game six of the forum. Our Stanley Cup playoff coverage continues in a moment. What did I tell you? This is fantastic. No traffic, no crowd. Steve, you're a genius. Let's go ashore for a beer. All right. Here they come. Welcome back, guys. Rough fat on the lake? Smooth. Very smooth. Cold age Wilson Golden. About as smooth as it gets. The only thing you forgot was fish. Just because you've washed your car doesn't mean you're finished. After each wash, you need some armor all on the dash, the bumper, and especially the tires. Armor all. It's the finishing touch every time you wash your car. And now, introducing Clean Start, the new cleaner which safely removes tough dirt. Clean Start, only from Armor All products. Montreal Canadiens stave off elimination with a 5-2 victory at the Spectrum in Philadelphia this evening. The Molson three stars in tonight's game. Star number one from the Canadiens is Bobby Smith. The second star also from Montreal, defenseman Chris Chelios. And the third star tonight with a goal and a pair of assists, defenseman Larry Robinson. The Canadiens win by three and sweep the three Molson stars in tonight's game and now send the series back to the form in Montreal. Incidentally, there was one penalty stemming from that little break us at the end of the period. Uh, Samuelson gets a five-minute major. Of course, it doesn't apply to tonight's game, nor will it in the next, but majors uh, can stack up and cause suspensions later on in a series, so it's of note. The victory for Montreal, you know, you don't win 23 Stanley Cups without nine lives, and now you have to wonder about this road ice advantage thing. In the conference finals, seven of nine games have gone to the visiting club, and tonight's no exception as the Canadians, for the second time in this series, win 5-2 to two at the Spectrum. That's the final score. The series is now 3-2 in favor of Philadelphia. To recap, the Molson three stars in tonight's game, number one, Bobby Smith. The second and the third are defensemen Chris Chelios and Larry Robinson. There's the final score. Live on CBC, Hockey Night in Canada, and the Stanley Cup playoffs continues. Some people suddenly grow old at 65. Maybe it's because you expect them to. Dad, the old clock isn't working again. No. I guess it's suffering from old age. When it comes to news about Ontario, there's really only one source for information. This Week in Ontario, a comprehensive look at the major happenings in your province. Informative, entertaining, and sometimes amusing. We're always looking for what you might want to see on This Week in Ontario. From Timmins to Kingston, from Windsor to Ottawa, each week we'll bring you closer to your neighbours on This Week in Ontario. Thursday nights at 7 on CBC Television. Best on the box. 
Harry Neal prefaced this playoff game by saying the Montreal Canadiens would need a big effort, or effort rather, from their veterans. Larry Robinson was among them this evening, one of the three stars. The Canadiens record a 5-2 victory over Philadelphia. The Flyers lead the series three games, two. Robinson was one of the stars, Smith the other, and another defenseman, Chris Chelios, involved in those three stars. This obviously would be a pressure game for Montreal, and I'm sure in some respects they might have been glad to play it at the Spectrum in Philadelphia because throughout the series it's the form for the Flyers and the Spectrum for Montreal. How do you account for that? Uh, maybe we try to do too much at home or uh, we get, I don't know, there really is no excuse for it. We should be more enthusiastic at home, but, uh, you know, we, we came in here, we're down 3-1, and we have to, it was a must game, we have to come in here and play physical. I want to get back to the game in just a moment, but uh, you sat down and said, I don't really want to take off my helmet. I feel self-conscious about my haircut. Uh, explain uh, who all got their haircut and uh, why. Well, I, I guess it's just superstitious guys want to change the luck, and uh, if, I think a few guys have a bowler and a couple other guys, but uh, it's just superstitious. It's changed the luck. And speaking of superstitions, Claude Lemieux has this thing about putting the puck in the other team's goal. Uh, is everybody involved in that before a game begins, and do you even think about it, or do you try to just do your own thing? I think everybody knows their own job. We get we got guys that are supposed to be out there handling the puck, and we got guys out there that are just supposed to be hitting and uh, playing an aggressive game. Uh, when we, we tr don't try and do each other's jobs, we're a really successful team. But, uh, you know, we got a big team, and we're a hitting team, and that's no secret. We've got to go out there and try and run the other team out of the rink. This is a tough question, perhaps, but your team is known for its depth last year in the playoffs using 27 players in the cup run. Is it a problem to have as many players as you have? Um, it, it, it's, not, it's tough for the guys that are playing to come in and... Uh, to, uh, it's, uh, when they do come in, they contribute well. Like guys like Shell Deline come in there, they score goals, and they, they score big goals for us. But uh, it's tough. Like for me, myself, I got to be involved in the games all the time, getting a lot of ice time. And uh, but uh, you know, we got a good group of guys, and the guys know it's all for the team. And uh, the end result of last year was the Stanley Cup, and a lot of guys here know what it takes now. Chris, if you can't analyze this year versus last, you were an underdog in 1986. This year, you're considered a favorite. Does that uh, present a problem? Uh, we, we just take it game by game. We know it's going to be hard to repeat. Right now we found ourselves in a little hole here. Uh, we thought we played uh, pretty well well enough to win the first and third game, but Hexall came up big and uh, the Flyers came up big. We, we've got to get going and we've got to tie up the series next game. And uh, As for being Stanley Cup champions, uh, right now no one cares about that. It's just who's going to win it this year. Tonight's a step in the right direction as you get back to within a game of the Philadelphia Flyers. Congratulations on being the third star. Thank you very much, Ron. Chris Chelios of the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens win the game 5-2. to two. The series still 3-2 in favor of Philadelphia, but Montreal is now heading home. The Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC continues in just a moment. It happens every time. You just get your garden into top shape, and then along come the bugs and the weeds. Well, now there's an easy way to control pests and protect your garden. New CIL ready-to-use insect and weed killers. They're convenient to use and pre-mixed for instant application. With guaranteed results every time. This summer, pick up some convenient protection against bugs and weeds with CIL's new defensive line of ready-to-use garden sprays. This is the perfect kind of day to visit your Ford dealer and talk about Ford Escort. Because on top of all the reasons to own an Escort you've probably heard about, we've added another one. Buy an Escort now and get $750 cash direct from Ford. But hurry, this is a limited time offer. With value like this, Ford Escort could go on being the world's best-selling car forever and ever. At Ford, quality is job one. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. At Crown Life, we know that tomorrow can only be insured by responding to your needs today. Crown Life works with you to build your future and the future of your family. At Crown Life, we help you construct a plan that meets your needs precisely. Crown Life. We can help you build a better tomorrow. Of these trade shows, Arm Brewster. Arm Brewster? Hey, hey Arm Brewster. How are you? Brewster, nice to see you. You know all these people. I meet with them every week. Come now. I'm Brewster. How's it going? We don't always meet face to face, Chief. By selling through long distance, I have more time to meet with all my customers, large and small. All that attention means more sales, right? All all right. Brewster. <laughs> I like to make scoggins. <laughs> no? Business long distance from Dell. 
top two teams in the National Hockey League in terms of defense meet in the Wales series, yet never has there been fewer than seven goals in any of these games. And tonight's no exception, 5-2. to two. Montreal wins to pull it within a game of the Philadelphia Flyers. The game-winning goal in this contest came in the second period. There was a flurry of three goals in just over a minute, maybe the prettiest of the night, set up by Larry Robinson as he finds defensive partner Craig Ludwig, and he finds the open goal. That goal at 13:29 puts it away. It was the fourth of the evening for the or third of the evening for the Canadians, and they win the game as I say, five to two, going away. Your thoughts? Oh, what uh, what's Ludwig doing in there in the first place? But first of all, let's talk about the. The referee, Dave Newell, did a great job. If you're going to give him heck, why can't they all referee like that? They let them play the game because it was an important game. No chintzy penalties. That's the way it should be refereed all the time. And nobody has brought up the fact that uh, three out of the five goals were along the ice. I'll bring that up that I said it. And I thought Carboneau and Claude Lemieux played a great game, too. What about the Philadelphia Flyers? Uh, you said get to Hextall. Uh, that obviously happened. Yep. Uh, what else? Well, uh, Montreal is at a disadvantage. They're going home now. And... Uh, uh, but there, I'll tell you, I'd be if I was Philly, I'd be worried right now, because they look like they've got the confidence back. They're in here laughing and joking after the game, and I, if I was Philly and I was Mike Keenan, I'd be a little worried because it looks like they're getting stronger and stronger. It goes back to the uh, original flow in this series in that first period in Montreal. They had the big knockout punch; it failed. Philadelphia came back, but now they have the chance, as in a boxing match, with a finishing blow, and don't avail themselves the opportunity. Well, if you have to say Hextall had a bad game and. Let's face it, and he had some bad goals. This is the first game where you can say he had some bad goals in him, and they win. And going back there, boy, that crowd's going to be ready, and watch out now. Well, Ron Hextall could be forgiven. This was his 88th start of the season, and he'll likely do the same when we broadcast our next game, and that'll be Game 6 of the Prince of Wales Championship Series, Philadelphia at Montreal, Thursday at 7.30. Thanks for being with us tonight, and good night. on CBC Hockey Night in Canada. Brought to you by Coors and Coors Light. A great call every time. Esso, makers of Protec Ultra Engine Oil. Protection for your engine's future. And by Ford of Canada, where quality is more than a commitment. Quality is job one. Hockey Night in Canada is a CBC Sports presentation produced in association with Olmeyer Communications. A new romance is too much for Matt. I think I'm in shock. What do you mean? It's a grandfather. Airwaves, Monday on CBC Television. This is CBC Television. Best of the Box.